Stand by to launch FanStream Sports. Three, two, one. Let's start. Hello, sports fans. Welcome to FanStream Sports. Nothing. Nothing but pure sports. This is the JP Show. JP, it is so good to hear you back on the air. Stand by. Now, here's JP. All right, welcome into a Wednesday edition of the JP Peterson Show. Oh, we got a big one for you today. I'm a little ambitious, a little ambitious today. I realize that, but um, what the heck? Let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. Why not? Um, we're going to attempt to do something today. JP going solo today. Uh, Peter uh, not available. Um, so here's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to cover the three major sports, the three major sports that, um, you know, with the, with apologies to some others. All right, Bucks. Scott Reynolds is going to join us at 10.15. Just got back from the owner's meeting. Not sure if he's still there, but wherever he is, we're going to cut. We're going to take you there on our worldwide technology that we have here to stream a TV show for two hours each and every day to go anywhere in the world. We want to go and get the, the best voices so you folks can hear it from the absolute experts with the snarky comments from yours truly. So <laughs> we, got, we got Scott at 10.15. We're going to go to him, and then at 10.45 or around 11, Brian Bradley is going to join us live from Amelie Arena. So we'll take you to where the Bolts are going to play the Bruins tonight. And Brian Bradley, the Lightning's first all-star, great all-around dude. He's got a meet and greet with some of the clients, but after that he's going to turn on his phone, right? And we're going to see him live and in person as well from Amelie Arena as the Bolts get ready to take on the Bruins tonight. That should be fun. Um then we're at 11.30, we're going to take you to the Trop. Yes, Tropicana Field, which has an amazing new turf, by the way. Did you see that on uh, on TV? Do you see the pictures of this? Looks fantastic. Much truer bounce. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, but, yeah, that um, is a, a beautiful, beautiful thing. And so we'll talk about that. Rich Hollenberg will join us live from the Trop at 11.30. So with me going solo and producing everything, I don't think I've screwed anything up yet. Um, I'll, see, I'll have, get the comments on here because um, you guys will tell me. <laughs> so we're going to attempt to do all this with the great help from my great friends, uh, Scott Reynolds, Brian Bradley, and Rich Hollenberg. And we're going to cover all the three major sports here, and we're going to get you uh, – we're going to have a fun show. We're going to have a fun show. If I don't screw everything up. So uh, we invite you guys to join us in the comments, as John Hill has already done. Good morning to you, John Hill, as well. You can always watch us on Fan Stream Sports on our YouTube channel, on the J.P. Peterson Show YouTube channel, if you're not watching there, on my Facebook, at J.P. Peterson, at FanStreamJP on Twitter, Instagram. We're all over the place. We are all over the place. And, of course, live on the Strike 102.5 HD2 on uh, all over the radio. A huge signal there. So, all right, so we set up the show for you, and away we go. We got some uh, somewhat breaking news. Um, we won't get too much into this because – I know a lot of you people are are very, very uh, – you're burnt out, as many of us are, about the stadium stuff. But it's important because when things like this pop up, we got to give you the latest information. You come here for that. So we'll keep it quick. Uh, the Times just came out with an article this morning revealing that there is no binding agreement in the documents for the Rays to stay here for 30 years as there was in the original Tropicana Field agreement. So in other words, at this point – the $2.4 billion, the real cost to the taxpayers, not the fake cost that's being thrown around, the real cost with interest and opportunity cost of selling the uh, the land to the raise at pennies on the dollar, the real cost to taxpayers, $2.4 billion. There's no ironclad agreement that the raise will even stay here for 30 years. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Now, the mayor says that's going to be in there, but here we are 14 months later after we announced and we still don't have this document. We have all the other documents, but we don't have this document. Okay. Um, when asked to produce the document, the I guess the, the mayor uh, or the mayor's office said the document is being prepared by outside counsel and thus is not privy to public disclosure. Why is that the only document <laughs> that's being, uh, maybe, I don't know if it's the only one, but why is that document? being prepared by outside counsel and not subject to public disclosure. So much of this negotiations and information have been held in secret that the public can't know. And what we, what we do know, the preliminary things that we do know, 
um, point to a, an absolute boondoggle by Stu Sternberg. As I pointed out many times to put on Twitter today, that the theme song chosen by Stu Sternberg for this year for the Rays is Thunder Road. And the last line in Thunder Road is, it's a town for losers and I'm pulling out of here to win. Do with that what you will. Um, why did he pick Thunder Road? It's a song about leaving. And that's the last line. You figure it out. So with that in mind, we uh, now go on and on with these negotiations. And the, the plan is to get the final numbers to the city council and the county commission in April for a vote in May. So to keep this as much out of the public eye as they possibly can, because it's a boondoggle. And as we've learned from our friends at nohomerun.com, uh, the League of Women Voters did a study, sent out, I believe, 39,000 surveys, and they got back eight, 800 of them. And 80% of the people, when informed about the actual cost of this, said, no way, not good for St. Petersburg. Not that people don't want baseball or to build a stadium. It's that this particular deal is horrible for Pinellas County and St. Petersburg and is absolutely nothing but a, a windfall, billions of dollars windfall, hundreds of millions um, to, to Stu Sternberg and his, and, and the race. So, and you don't even have a binding agreement. That's interesting. We'll see where that goes in the coming days, but something to watch uh, on the field yesterday. Um, amazing. The, the Rays and the Tigers, uh, the new turf was the star, the new turf. If you've seen it, it's got the different shades of it now, which I should be able to put up a picture, but I didn't do that doing enough here today, folks. Um, yeah, it's so it's got the different colors like a real grass field would do. Like it looks like the verticut. It looks fantastic. And that's what always been one of my big bugaboos about that stadium turf is it looks so plastic. It looks like the stuff that's on your grandma's condo in uh, in Clearwater. It's, it's it's just ugly. It's it and it it just doesn't make for good watching. And this looks ten times better. And I think it's important, folks. I, I just you know baseball should be played on natural grass. And if it can't be played on natural grass and you can't smell the grass, by the way, can't they can't they get like one of those, you know, those, those misters, get the smell of natural grass? Why, why can't we do that? We do it. At, they do it at, at Disney, right? The smell of natural grass. Just start wafting it through the stadium because it looks like natural grass now. It looks like natural grass. So congrats to Shaw Carpet Company that does this. Um, it's it, fantastic. Absolutely awesome. And it looks great. And the players say that it's a truer hop. It's It's got a uh, coconut husk as its backfill. Coconut husk. So I guess they grind up the, you know, the coconut husk that you take off the coconut. Have you ever, ever, have you guys ever husked the coconut? Have you ever actually done that? Like split it open? We used to do that as kids all the time. Grab the coconuts, pull off the husk, get to the coconut, smash, put take a, take a, a hammer, and, and a spike, and then smash it out, and then drink the coconut milk, and then crack it open, eat the coconut. Fantastic. Um, oh, my youth. It's fantastic. Uh, so the coconut husk is the backfill instead of rubber tires. Whatever. The guys like it. They said it's softer. It's got a truer bounce to it. It's a little slower, which is probably good. Um, but they're getting used to, you know, get used to it for a couple of days, and but the, the reviews are good. They're really, really good. So I, I, and it looks a hell of a lot better. And also yesterday, Yandy Diaz hit his fourth home run of the spring. So that's good. Bilal hit his third home run of the spring. And um, Ryan Pepio was really, really good yesterday. And this is important. Pepio has got to be good. You know, he's not going to be Tyler Glass now who he was traded for. We know that, but he needs to be good. He needs to be good. And yesterday he was really good. Eight strikeouts, gave up two hits at a walk um, in his final spring preparation. So, uh, good on Ryan Pepio. He looks like he's ready to go. And of course, the bullpen um, it should be the strength of this team with with Fairbanks, uh, Jason Adam, that whole crew. You know, we'll see how they pull it together. But since 2020, they've been the best bullpen in all of baseball, uh, top five, top six in every category, any, every meaningful category. So the bullpen will be huge again for this team. And the starters are, you know, frankly, a question mark. They're a big, big question mark. Offensively, without Josh Lowe, you know, in, in without Wander Franco, this is going to be a work in progress. Now, there's some nice pieces. You know, you hope Isaac Paredes can hit 30 bombs again. You hope Siri continues to uh, you know, can get better in the average department, get on base more so he can use that speed, 
you know, you hope Randy continues to be Randy. I mean, you look, he's in great shape. He looks like he's ready for, even though it was a slow start to the spring, like really slow. It looks like he's going to be ready to go. Um, and we'll see what happens with the, with the rest of the group. But obviously they need Brandon Lau to be the good Brandon Lau starting off. And, um, you know, we'll see what they what they get from Caballero at short. So, you know, we started up on Thursday. It's going to be interesting. We'll hear from Rich Hollenberg later on in the show. We'll break down a little bit more um, in detail what's going on with the Rays. But I'm excited to see this team on the field. We'll get rid of all the off-the-field shenanigans. Let's get down to business on the baseball field. I think it's going to be a really fun group to watch. It's always a fun group to root for, right? Always the underdogs, uh, always the lowest payroll in the AL East. That's even though Stu's uncomfortable um, and he's going to have to swallow hard to take all this public money, uh, <laughs> I would have to swallow hard too. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, but he'll swallow hard and, and really sacrifice for you people. And I hope you understand the sacrifice that this man is making for you people. I hope you understand that, that he's going to swallow hard and be very uncomfortable with this $90 million payroll, which is $80 million under the average and still in the bottom uh, fifth of the league. But he'll, he'll for you people, I just want you to know, these are the sacrifices that he makes for you people. So don't ever, ever think that Stu Sternberg's not putting it online for you people out there. He's a man of the people. No question. Um, all right. <laughs> I said that with a straight face, didn't I? <laughs> uh, all right. Some other things I want to get to. Um, this is big for... The, the Bucks and it doesn't even really involve the Bucks uh, directly, but Ryan Ramchick reports out of New Orleans that he won't be able to play in 2024. They're all uh, uh, Pro Bowl tackle, Ryan Ramchick. So with the additions that the Saints have made, not really impressed with the addition, Willie Gay, Chase Young, who they overpaid for, um, seems more desperation moves than anything for the Saints, and now Ryan Ramchick may not be able to play. Uh, that's 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 a big big blow to your New Orleans uh, Saints, um, and just in general, uh, we you know the owners' meetings have concluded. Um, you know, I think Todd Bowles probably said it best. You know, we're not we're not here to win the off season. We're here to win the season, and so. But I still think they won the off season. Nobody's going to say that, and that's the way they like it. Um, that's the way they like it, and we'll um, the the off season matters by the players you get not the things that are talked about, not that, not the Vegas odds. None of those things matter. It's about the players you get, how you fill the holes. And I don't think, no, it's not possible for Jason Light to have done a better job. And we'll hit uh, Scott Reynolds here in a little bit. We'll talk some more bucks. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. Okay, wait. we'll take a break and we'll come back on the other side. Scott Reynolds will join us and we'll get into all the uh, owners meeting stuff and uh, all the fun stuff that went down there. We'll get the... Uh, uh, the latest on the menu that uh, Dan Lucas was telling us about. I'm sure Scott Reynolds part partook in that as well. So big show for you. Scott Reynolds coming up. Brian Bradley live from Amelie Arena. Then Rich Hollenberg live from the Trops. So stay with us here on the J.P. Peterson Show. We're brought to you by the Jeeves Law Group. Scott Jeeves just texted me, by the way, on another matter. Thank you very much, Scott. We'll get back to you. Um, but that's what he does. He makes you feel super important because you are. You are. You are a client of theirs. You are super important. You're not just a number. It's not just a case that they're looking to settle quickly, get their cut, and you get your little cut and be done with it. They treat you uh, as the important person that you are, not like a number. So if you're involved in an accident, don't go chasing some huge law firm that you never even you never, you never see the people. Scott Jeeves is here. He has an office in uh, in Tampa. He has an office in downtown St. Pete. He's part of us here in Tampa Bay. So keep it local with the Jeeves Law Group. JeevesLawGroup.com. Back in three with Scott Reynolds. Stay with us. JP here for my friends at your local Synovus Bank. And I do mean friends, and I do mean local. One of the local managers in Tampa is John Acosta, big fan of the show, and I've known him for over 40 years. He's been in local banking since 1983. You talk about developing relationships. You don't stick around for that long unless you're doing things the right way and have a great reputation. And that's the focus company-wide at Synovus. Big enough to handle any complex international transaction, but small enough to answer the phone when you have an urgent question about your business or personal account. And for personal accounts, they have a very easy app that works great. You can do everything online. And for large or small businesses, you will get that personal touch and services to help build your business, taking your dreams and aspirations from the whiteboard to reality. 
We can make that happen. Let us show you how. For a get acquainted meeting to open a business or personal account, just call John or go to synovus.com to find out where your local branch is. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. JP here for the Geddes Gordon Real Estate Group and our good friend Jane Geddes. Folks, simply put, there is nobody like Jane. Jane is a former LPGA two-time major championship winner. She was also vice president of talent relations at WWE. She also has a law degree from Stetson. So if Jane can drain a 10-footer to win the U.S. Open and stare down Hulk Hogan in the boardroom, you want Jane on your real estate team to not only negotiate the best deal, but find you the perfect home or investment property. And when you work with the Geddes Gordon Group, you become part of the real estate family and get concierge services that include expertly staging, marketing, and preparing your home for sale. Advice on golf properties. Hey, you might even get some golf tips. Many of their clients become friends long after the sale or purchase is completed. It's all part of the deal. So if you're looking for that perfect home or investment property or trying to get top dollar for your home, go with Jane Geddes and the Geddes Gordon Group because there's nobody like Jane. Call 813-485-6808 or go to geddesgordon.kw.com. That's G-E-D-D-E-S gordon.kw.com or call 813-485-6808. Let's go! Right now, back to the show on Fan Stream Sports. All right, welcome back uh, to the J.P. Peterson Show here. We're brought to you by Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. We had Chris Lugo on yesterday telling us all about F1 racing. That's right. He's a renaissance man. Doesn't just know your health, but he knows F1 racing. So, And he knows your health. So check him out at BAMMC.com. Check out that interview from yesterday. It was really, really uh, informative about all things um, uh, supplements, supplements that you should be using and things you should not be using. Um, so let's welcome in our good friend, Scott Reynolds, a happy uh, customer and patient yeah. at Bay Area Mono Medical Center. What's up, Scotty? How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Got my Bolt shirt on today. Good nice. Yeah. Nice. We have Brian Bradley coming up here in just a few minutes from uh, from Emily Arena. Can you believe I'm doing this by myself tonight? Yeah. We're going, you're a big and, boy. I think you got it. <laughs> you know I'm going to screw it up, but I got no, you on. Good. So we're good. But I got you covering yep. the Bucks yep. uh, live on TV. I got Bradley from Emily Arena covering yep. the big game tonight. And then Rich Hollenberg is going to join us from the Trop 1130. Got so we got them all covered. I mean, got it covered. It, it's interesting. You've been doing TV with me for a long time. Yes. But we worked at Channel 8 back, you know, 15 years ago, yep. 20 years ago. We need we would need three satellite trucks to do this. Right. Fully staffed. <laughs> okay. And then, yeah. you know, a full uh, full studio control yeah. to do this. And it's just me. With my StreamYard yeah. technology. Look how far we've come. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's a hell of a lot cheaper. You know that. Right. No yeah. question. So great to have you. Um, all right. So how were the owners meetings beside the uh, besides the shrimp cocktail and all that good stuff? Yeah, all right, good. Tell us about that, too. Well, I mean, it was good. Uh, um, they have the nice carving station. I'm a big prime rib guy. So oh, nice. we got that. They had an, they had, I mean, they have open bar at this thing, right? The reception. Wow. But, nice. But, um, th this year they had an old fashioned station which was just strictly old fashions. And if you know me, like that's my go-to. And yeah. so, man, um, it, I, I don't. You partook. I you partook, partook is what yeah. you're saying. Yes. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. No, it, it was really fun. Had some great conversations. Um, you know, all of this is like off the record. It's just, it's not like yeah. for, for media coverage. Uh, the, the media portion is on Monday, you have the AFC coaches. They meet with the media. And then on Tuesday, you have get the NFC coaches. We were there for for time bowls. And Jason Light also spoke, as did Joel Glazier. But on Monday night, they've got the the reception at the Ritz Carlton, uh, out like in the, the courtyard area. It's beautiful. Um, got to talk a lot with Dave Canales. You know, oh, nice. First time since oh, we probably talked to Dave for thirty minutes. We had myself, Matt Matera, 
Adam Slavon out there from Peter Report, well represented, the mm -hmm. Peter Report gang, there you go. as we call ourselves. And so just chatted with Dave. I had a great conversation with Mike Tomlin. Uh, always great seeing Mike T uh, out there, former Bucks defensive Absolutely. backs coach. Helped yeah. Win. Yeah. The Super Bowl in 2002 with 31 interceptions. That's a record that will never be broken. How about that? 31 interceptions, JP. We've talked about that number before in the regular season. And then I think they added like nine more in the postseason in three games. Picking so up how's first Mike, so how's Mike T doing? I hate to interrupt you, but I want to yeah. because I'm more interested in the yeah. person. Is he because this is this is interesting. I haven't talked to Mike probably yeah. in probably six or seven years. Mm -hmm. Is he still the same dude? Because it's still impossible. the same guy. How about the same that? Guy. He, he How about is that? Flappable, full of confidence and swagger. Like, you know, um, what's that old '80s song? Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. Ain't nothing yeah. gonna slow me down. That, that's that's my team, man. It's just that's that guy. He's he is. Uh, but being a head coach, it yeah. changes people. Money changes people. Not so him. it, but it, but him. it hasn't. Nope. How same about guy. that? That's same guy. That's what I would expect yep. to be quite yep. honest. Yeah, but. he is as genuine, um, and you know, it, it, and and I'll say this, and I'm I'm not going to mention any names, right? But it, but it's like I'm a local reporter covering a team, right? I've done this for 29 years, but it's like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not ESPN. You know, I, I don't yeah. work for like the the national scene. I've had some opportunities, didn't want to pursue that. I'm, I wanted to build Peter Report into right. the, you know the media empire that it is. But and you have, yeah. But the thing is, is like. And and I've I've been uh, I've been big time before by some oh, people yeah. that have we all left, have yeah right absolutely and um, it, yeah I'm sure same thing feel with free you. to like, mention names too we always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no but, but Seth Mike, Greenberg yeah Mike T has never ever ever big time me and like it's it's not just like giving me a, a, we talked for 20 minutes it gave me a hug I mean just genuine good salt of the earth kind of guy you know yeah and, and I'm I'm not like a I'm not a, a Plaza Steelers fan, but I'm always going to be a Mike Tomlin. Oh, of course, fan. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, me as well, uh, because yep. he's such a genuine dude. And yeah, and that's it's the Andy you know, Reid. Yeah, um, talk some barbecue with him living in Kansas City. You know, nice. so that was fun. Um, who else did I that I meet that I remember? Um, uh, Jason Light, obviously. Uh, Brian and Joel Glazier saw them for for a bit, uh, which was fun. Um, Andrew Whitworth talked to Sean McVay and Andrew Whitworth about. Kevin Carberry, the new offensive line coach for the oh, Bucks, cool, cool, as well as Liam Cohen, just rave reviews from both of those guys. Whitworth was just because yeah, he he played under Carberry, right? As the right. offensive lineman, as the left right. tackle for the Rams, just raved about the guy. He's like, "Your running game is going to get fixed." Like he that's a huge ball. get, man. We haven't oh, talked yeah. about that enough. Yeah. You know, yeah, and he's he said he's he's intense. He 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 will get the job done. So. Uh, Whitworth was a great guy. Really, the first time I had a chance to meet him. Um, caught up with Fitzmagic. Ryan Fitzpatrick was there. So oh, that yeah. was fun. Yeah. What's he doing now? It's doing TV, right? Or yeah, Amazon, doing uh, right? Amazon Thursday nights. Uh, loves it. Um, you know, remember talking to the Peter Report guys, you know, uh, Mark Cook, myself, and all of that back in back in, in his Tampa days. Talked about the Deshaun Jackson thing. It was a little premeditated, you know, because yeah. he – he talked to Deshaun, and Deshaun came in to the Eagles game with all of that garb on right bef before the game. And and Fitzpatrick said, he said, could you imagine if I wore all that stuff out to like a press conference after the game, like the reaction that would get? And Deshaun was like, you should do it. And he's like, all right, I might, you know. And, of course, they won. He had a big game, threw that, that bomb to Deshaun uh, against the Eagles in the first quarter. And um, and then boom, Fitz Magic, you know, was born. <laughs> it was he's awesome. still milking that to this day, which is great. You see the commercials, right? Uh, so he's yeah, yeah, he's milking it. He's I, like, I remember like, yeah, that, that press that conference. Was a, that was a oh, who doesn't remember? It? I that remember that amazing. press conference. What, what I remember it for is like he walks in like that, and I forget yeah. who asked the first question. I don't. I'm not trying to be mean. Yeah. But the the first question was about football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, we're burying the lead here. So right. I asked the second question. I'm like, what the hell's going on here with this? Exactly. Guy? Yeah. So and uh yeah, that was fair. And then the great the great line, God, I hope I get this right. He said, Is that your somebody I think Rock Riley said, Is that yours? Or do you is that your clothes? He goes, uh, only the chest hair yeah. is mine. <laughs> 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 only the chest hair. Yeah. Great. So great, no, so. it was it was a great time. Uh, next year will be in Phoenix, then it'll be in Boca again, and then Orlando. So you, you got to come out to to these with JP. It's it's a great time. No, I, I actually, um, you know, I got the I was gonna um, put my credential request in, and then we had some other things going on yep. family wise. So just yep. you know, you know, when those things come up, oh, you yeah. just can't do it. Uh, can't do everything. So I really yep. wish I could. It's not far from where I'm at. Like yep. like 
15 minutes. So what do we got next? We're next week in Phoenix, next year in Phoenix. Yeah, Phoenix next year. And then Boca and then, and then, um, uh, Orlando. I've, I've been to going- the one in Phoenix. Yeah. I, I, um, yeah, I'm going to go to the Phoenix one next year. I've never been, I've always gone to Boca in Orlando because they're in Florida and I can, you know, get there quickly, but yeah, I'm going to put that one on yeah. the calendar. Cause yeah. I, cause that's when, you know, it's, it's a, that Monday night thing is the best thing because it is, that's when yeah. it's a casual setting and you can renew those relationships. Like yeah. you, you know, that you've built over the years with Mike, like I would have said, sure. You know, chatted with Mike T like you and Raheem. Yeah. Did you get to see Raheem at all? Raheem was not there. Didn't see it Raheem, was not which there. was little surprising. Yeah. But, wow. but see, I think, I think um, a lot of the head coaches were missing because I guess the head coaches kind of, went out like the night before. So, oh. I mean, there, there's some hangovers. I mean, if you oh. see people. And raw you know, would be in that category. And there's nothing wrong with that. Brother. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I, mean, I was having a good time. hung over yesterday. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a free old fashion station will do that to you, bro. Yeah, and yeah. that uh, that will happen, no question. All right. So, do we learn anything um, from the? I mean, uh, well, let's talk about the kickoff yeah. rule first of all, which I love. Oh yeah, absolutely I love it. Love it. Um, yeah. So, break it down from your perspective and what what you heard the coaches say about it. Um, I I, th- I think that the, the exciting thing about this is, and I like the fact that the Bucks have a new special teams coordinator, right? Um, because he wants to come in. Um, you know, McGahee, he wants to come in and 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 make a good impression, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is his first year on the job, and I'm not saying that that coaches, uh, you know, like like um, um, you know, like Casey Rogers has known Todd Bowles for years, right? Like right. they're friends, they're confidants, right? He's a defensive line coach. I, I think Casey has some level of comfortability, right? And that's okay. You want that, right? You want your coaches. Mm-hmm. to be comfortable and to have that chemistry and camaraderie and all of that. But when you're a new guy coming in, you, you know, you don't have that. Right. You want to make a good first impression. Sure. Right? You, you want to prove your worth, right? Maybe you go a little bit overboard, maybe, you, you know, an extra hour watching film, whatever, whatever you have to do. And I like the fact that this is a really, really big rule change because you're going to see kickoffs return for touchdowns this year. Like, yeah. I think a Thank lot. God. I yeah. really do. I think, I think a, a lot. lot. Yeah. Okay. And, and what I mean a lot is like um, maybe one or two each year by an NFL team, right? I mean, the Bucks have not had one in years, right? And, and I mean, when 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 you're when you're essentially penalizing a team for for the touchback, right, is really what is happening. Um, you want the ball in the kick returner's hands, right? And then and then w- once that happens anything can happen, right? You can, mm-hmm. you can have a, you can have a fumble, you can have a kickoff return for touchdown. You can have a big return, whatever. But when it's a touchback, nothing happens. Nothing the ball happens. gets exactly. started at the 25 or whatever. And yeah. So, so now I think there's the opportunity. The league is saying, we want to put the foot back in football. Yeah. Why not? I mean, yeah. it was a wasted play before. And 80% so now, of the time, 80% oh, yeah. of the time. Yeah. It's ridiculous. ridiculous. So, so now I, I like the fact that, that you have a new special teams coordinator, who a doesn't want to screw this up, mm-hmm. and b maybe wants to turn this into a weapon, turn it into an advantage, yeah. right? And and so I've I've got some hope that 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 will happen, and I think that the teams that really can figure this out and really get an early jump on it, and be proactive rather than reactive to this, right, right, can have a decided advantage. You know, like for example, like when I was coaching Pop Warner, you know, we're we're a suburban team up here in Pasco County. We had, we had some good athletes and we had a couple of kids go division one football eventually, but I mean, th- th- there were more athletic teams out there that, yeah. that, that we were Understood. undermatched against. Right. Yeah. And we had to do two things to gain an advantage or maybe even to level the playing field. Really? Yeah. We had to play smart football. It means mistake free, like no penalties. Right. You know, first rule in football, don't beat yourself. Learn that from right. Lonnie Kiffin. Okay. Yep. Uh, two things. Number one, show up. Number two, don't beat yourself. <laughs> if you do those two things, you have a chance, yes. right? The second thing is, is on defense, um, we taught the art of forcing fumbles, right? Um, it, when you're talking, when you're talking about kids, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, the passing game's not really there. It's running the ball, it's reverses, mm-hmm. tosses, pitches, whatever. Okay. Um, a lot of times. You know, you're taught to not go for the ball and make the tackle at that age, right? Because you don't want to like miss and go for the ball, and all of a sudden you give up a touchdown. We taught how to strip the ball, tackle and we the ball, were really, yeah. really good at it. Exactly, yeah. tackle the ball. 
And so because of that, that gave us a decided advantage where we looked at it and said, you know, we're going to have maybe eight possessions a game, right? How do we steal a possession or yeah. two? Yeah. And so um, we had we had the rule of three takeaways. If we had three takeaways in a game, we won every yeah. time. Yeah. And so that, that was how we taught it. And so you look for those special advantages, those ways to steal a possession, to maximize a possession, right? Um, obviously, we have a turnover. You know, it could be in scoring position already, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of the thing on these kickoff returns is how do the Buccaneers use this to their advantage? How, how do they make this a weapon? How do they take it more seriously than other teams? Exactly. And the best in this because this right. is this is brand new horizon here. This is new territory to discover. And I think that if, if they can do that, and I think the other thing too is, is because so many times, so many years have gone by since the, the kickoffs become an afterthought with all the right. touchbacks. Yeah. Yeah. So how can you, all of a sudden you're going to have these returners that are returning the ball. Now, how can you force some fumbles? Right. How can you get the ball at the 35 yard line of your opponent? Right. So I think if, if there's a way McGahee can really come in, and hone in on this and have the Buccaneers be one of the, the teams at the forefront yes. of returning kicks and then also covering Defending them really, really yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it. Sure. I, I think it, it can give Todd Bowles and his team a decided advantage this year. We'll see what happens. So um, I kind of put this out on Twitter yesterday. Who who do you think? And I'm looking. I'm, I was kind of watching some of the tape from the XFL, yeah. and I'm like, okay, this looks more like a – actually looks more like a running play, yeah. you know, because, you know, you've got – it's a, it's a very congested Trey area. Palmer. Yeah, Trey yeah. Palmer. I, that's what right I said. Man. Trey Palmer because he can run through arm tackles. Yep. Devin Tompkins is your speed guy. He, you know, yep. you get a crease, he's he goes gone. down first contact. Though. But but yep. first contact, he yep. goes down. So yep. you need a stronger guy. I, I, that's what I came up with, Trey, Trey Palmer. Now Palmer. somebody else said if we draft Keon Coleman, he'd be perfect. And I'm like, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> because okay, yeah, a, there's no doubt. Yeah, yeah, Keon Coleman, um, Malachi Corley from yeah. Western Kentucky. Yes. Yes. <sighs> I mean, you talk about Xavier Worthy. Xavier Worthy. Yeah. Who's a little smaller, but yeah. Yeah. No, these. I think I think Trey Palmer would be perfect at it yes. because on this roster, know, I agree. Yeah, uh, he's got some, and that's what you want—a strong guy gets yeah. a little he's bit a of dog a scene. too, man. He's yeah. you know he's and and if if David Moore was on this team, I would say him. Yeah, he's exactly. in Carolina now, but you exactly. Know, it's, yeah, I, I think you want a, a bigger receiver, right? And and I think that that's that's why. Yep. Florida State wisely used Keon Coleman. Yeah. Was because he can break some arm tackles, right? And that's that's what you want um, on those returns. So, yeah, I think Trey Palmer is the natural guy for me on this roster right now. And we'll see who they get and who else emerges. Um, I think sometimes, too, you, you look at some defensive backs maybe, right? Yeah. Uh, Zion McCollum. I mean, I know he's going to be a starting corner. You don't want to risk an injury and all of that. He was a return I mean, guy, yeah. But he's he's got, like, speed for days. He's a 4-3 guy. And I think mm -hmm. that's the thing, too, is is um, your, your – um, I think your conversion point – is going to be deeper on these kickoffs, deeper mm -hmm. in like your side of, of the field, for example, because right. they're lining up on the on your side of the 50 yard line, right? This is not kicking and then you're you're racing right. 45, 50 yards down the field. They're they're closer to the action. And so if you can break, if you can, you know, break it at the 35, 40 yard line, whatever, okay, now you got 60, 65 yards to run. Right. And that's where you need some dude with wheels the, to once you get, get caught from behind, wave, yeah. like take it to the house, right? Quick because acceleration and go. Yeah. Otherwise you break through and great. You've, you've done the job. The blocking's done their job, but then you got some speedy dudes on the other team on the coverage unit that can recover. And, you know, and, and all of a sudden you're tackled at the 25 yard line rather than score. Right. Yeah. And then, all right, well, are you selling for a field goal or, you know, cause you would have had a touchdown if you had the guy with wheels go right. all the way so it's fascinating i mean it's going it to be is. really interesting to see how you know the really good special teams coaches yeah. do that and i agree with you special teams here you know, other than the actual punting and kicking which yeah. i don't you know not to me it's not special teams that's our right. special players yeah but it's the coverage units and the runbacks returns yeah. you know it's always it to me when they're keith armstrong was like don't f up that that's was right. the idea is just don't f up exactly. it was nothing there's nothing uh, uh, aggressive about it yes. nothing unique about it it was just like run out of bounds as soon as you can so you don't fumble yeah. For if you're a returner, that yeah. seemed to be our, our 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 whole strategy. So I agree, and and that's that's why I like. <laughs> Which is not a strategy, but it's way. not. Yeah. yeah, hope is not a strategy. Oh. Yeah, so don't I, fumble. I, don't fumble should not be your your goal yeah. for for returns. That should, yeah, be that should not given, be it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I think that that having um, 
you know, the new special teams coordinator come in I, I, at the right time. I, I think that's great. So, yeah. yeah. So um, the hip drop tackle, I'm not, you know, I, I it, Bowles kind of addressed it, right? He said, we don't do that anyway. Yeah. Does that have an effect on what the Bucks are doing? Really don't think so. Um, yeah. I, I think if anything, it's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, what's crazy. I went back and kind of like studied the season a little bit and, the Buccaneers had almost a thousand yard rusher, right? Nine hundred and ninety yards. We'll round up. We'll give it to Rashad. Okay, a thousand yard rusher. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. The two thousand yard receivers and K. Dot. The interesting thing about the Buccaneers and their skill position players last year, and yes, they probably need more points, right, than just twenty one points per game. Mike Evans played in all seventeen games. Chris Godwin mm-hmm. all seventeen games. K. Dotton, all seventeen games. And ninety five percent of the snaps. All seventeen <laughs> games. Yeah, interesting. So, Having said that, the interesting thing about that is, is that's uncommon. Yeah, that's not <laughs> going to happen again. That's lucky. And that, that didn't, you know, you're not going to have that that happen every year. So I think that where, where it could impact the Buccaneers is hopefully none of those players succumb to hip drop uh, tackle injury. Right. Uh, so it, it's, it's not going to affect the Bucs defense because they don't do it. Right. Where it, it might affect them if this rule wasn't put in place was it might have affected one of their offensive players, right? And it's a nasty injury. I mean, like look yeah. at Mark Andrews was out for most of the year. Sometimes it's season ending. Break a leg, break a yeah. leg you know. So or a high ankle sprain, yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else you picked up uh from the interviews or anything else that was kind of uh yeah. surprising? Yeah, um, a couple of things. Uh Todd Bowles, and we're gonna have a story on this later on on Peterreport.com. Todd Bowles was talking about his chess pieces, guys that that he that he can really um, uh, use in, in multiple different ways. And he said he has four of them. And uh, Levante is one of those guys because he can he blitz. You know, he had four and a half sacks last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, he can come off the edge. He can drop in coverage, do those things. Zion McCollum is one of those players. He can play corner, nickel, free safety. I mean, we saw that versatility in the Eagles game in the wildcard yeah. game. Yeah. I think he's going to be mostly a, a cornerback. But – you know, Todd's the mad scientist when it comes to devising pressure packages, et cetera. So th- there's there's number two. Number three is, of course, Anton Winfield Jr., right? I mean, he's Swiss Army he's, knife. Uh, the Swiss Army knife that, that literally can do it all. Led the Bucks in just about every category last year. Number four is Joe Tryon Schoenka. I wrote an article about Joe Tryon Schoenka. Who? Yeah. Who? Uh, JTS. Um, he's okay. a player that, that you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised, and this is just a guess, and I could be wrong. This is not based on any inside information, but we saw how KJ Britt platooned with Devin White last year, right? Mm-hmm. KJ Britt was mostly in on rundowns, mm-hmm. although he played most of that Lions game, right? Yeah. Devin White yeah. didn't play that much. But blitzing, KJ Britt can do that, dropping in coverage. That's not exactly his thing. And Joe Tryon Shoinka was actually dropping coverage over 100 times in 2022 when he saw the most action, um, uh, you know, when he was essentially replacing Jason yeah. Pierre Paul as a full time yeah. starter. Now, those snaps went down last year because he got benched halfway through the year and was just in the rotation. But you have to wonder, um, he's really good kind of as, as a blitzer, maybe even more so than, than a go around, you know, yeah. the, the corner. He doesn't play the run well, that's for sure. Yeah, so I just wonder if if he's going to be used at maybe middle linebacker a little bit huh. and do okay. some of what Devin White did, which is those A-gap blitzes. He's bigger than Devin White. He's 6'5", oh. 260 pounds, right? So when you got these blocking backs that are charged with picking up the, the mic and the A-gap, yeah. okay, now you've got a longer player, 6'5", not six foot. 265 pounds, not 240 pounds, right? Interesting. So, yeah, I just wonder if we don't see some tinkering by Todd Bowles and and using Joe Tryon Shoinka and trying to just use him as a utility player rather than, than the edge rusher. That's a, that's a, a very interesting yeah. take, yeah, because he could, if he has to drop in coverage, he can. He can. He's yeah. not, but he's also, you know, yeah, I, I, I pity the fool that's going to try to take him on on an right. A-gap blitz with a 10-yard run. Run exactly. up, especially if you got some of these smaller stature, five nine, five ten exactly. running. But he's just gonna, he's just gonna overwhelm them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and, and the interesting thing I picked up from Dave Canales, well, this was like an off the record conversation, but it's also kind of like a no brainer. I mean, I'm not really yeah. revealing anything here, but, but, uh, I, and I said, okay, Dave, so you, 
you you went up against Todd Bowles every day in training camp practice. You've seen this guy for a full year. You know how he operates his defense. So how do you beat a Todd Bowles defense? And I, I thought he said, well, look what, what the Lions are doing. <laughs> I thought he was going to say that. Right? <laughs> Jared Moff pretty much owns yeah. Todd Bowles right now. But what he said was interesting. He said, you have to, to just stop them on offense because if you give Todd Bowles a lead, that's where he's at his best. That's where all the pressure packages come. And he's like, that, 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 was, that was the mm-hmm. thing talking about himself. That was the thing for me was where I was applying the pressure on myself and where I felt like we came short on, on a couple of games is get when, the lead. When, yeah. He didn't get the lead for, for Todd. And he's like, he's like, if you look at the, the Packers game, right? Look at, look at the Eagles playoff game. Mm-hmm. Look what happens when this guy has a lead. Yeah. A lead, a double digit, like, like 10, nothing lead. Right. Or, you know, 24, 14 going into halftime. That's, that's where Todd Bowles gets really, really dangerous. And that's where those game plans just open up and, and he just gets like <laughs> just dials up the so, blitz. So you know so, my reaction is what's why that? didn't you do that all the time? Don't what, just uh, do it when you yeah, when don't just do it when you're ahead. Stay aggressive, oh, yeah. man. Yeah, from the yeah, get-go, no. man. Act like you got a 10-point lead. Cause that's when our defense is at its best. Mm-hmm. I think you know, this is, I think he plays it too safe sometimes, you know, especially when they yeah, yeah. I I I would love to him for him to do that. Let it yep. rip. Let it rip. You got you got some good players and some I aggressive think he players. Got better. Yes, As I agree. As a coach last year, we saw him I take totally more agree. chances. I there totally were times agree. when he opted for for fifty plus yard field yeah. goals rather than punts. Right, yep. he got three points rather than nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were times where he went for it on fourth down, fourth and short, fourth and five. Yeah. So I I think that that he's he's growing and he needs yeah. to. He, he needs did. to. Yep, I agree. Um, I'm still not sold if, if he can be a guy that can take the Bucks to the Super Bowl and win it. Maybe he can. Maybe he will. Andy Reid wasn't that guy in Philly, but he That's became right. that guy That's right. in Kansas City. And, of course, everyone says, well, Patrick Mahomes. Okay, but, but Donovan McNabb was not a slouch either. Yeah. I mean, yeah. McNabb was a perennial Pro Bowl quarterback. The coaches, and- you know, coaches are like players. They get better as they yeah. get more experience, you know? Yes. And I think Todd I think Todd was much more comfortable in his own skin last year yeah. as a person and as a coach, and I expect right. that same, and, and I, you know I what, feel JP? more of it now. He had every right to be even more conservative and go the opposite direction, yeah. right? With the with a first year offensive coordinator, but he didn't. Right. He trusted him, and I think I think it was a little bit more like Dave. You got the offense. I got the defense. Almost like Gruden and Kiffin. You know, Monty, mm-hmm. you got the defense, man. I'm gonna call the plays, and we're gonna we're gonna kick some ass, man. Like, like I feel like <laughs> Bulls. That was pretty he, good. Gruden. He could have easily gone conservative with with a first time play caller, not just somebody who was new to Tampa as a play caller. David never called plays before in college or pro, but Bulls didn't. He went the opposite way. He went a little bit more aggressive, and I love to see that now. And I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you right now, this team is so fired up about Liam Cohen. Like yeah. you have no idea. The stuff that I've heard about Liam Cohen behind the scenes, it's just like that. I think this team is going to hit the ground running. I think that you can pencil this team in for 24 points a game, which would make them a top 10 offense this year. Uh, remember, they went from 18 points per game in Byron Leftwich's last season to 21 points. That's a three point advantage in a field goal league, JP. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Right now, you get another field goal per game. Now you're scoring 24 points per game rather than 21. That puts you in the top 10 in terms of offense. That's it's closer to 10 than number one. Yes, yes. Not scoring 30, but man, 24 points per game with the Todd Bowles defense on the other side. Look out. Yeah. All right, Scotty. Uh, great stuff as always. Um, I got Brian Bradley here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to bring you both in. Can we do that? Let's see if we can do this. Sure. And as we say goodbye to you and we say yeah. hello to Brian, because I know you're a huge Bolts fan. I Brian, am. are you there? Go Bolts. Are you there, Bree? Yeah, I can hey, hear can you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. you. Um, yeah, do you see? Uh, do you see my man Scott Reynolds there with you What's up, Brian? from the How Pewter Report? Yeah, he's, I can see you guys all on the monitor right now. Yeah, uh, he's got game, his Brian. lightning shirt on. Go he's bolts. ready. For, he's, he's ready for the game tonight. So uh, we're going to do a handoff from football to uh, to hockey here. So Let's thank you, Scotty. Appreciate you it, it. Take care, guys. All right, uh, the great Scott Reynolds right there. We'll take him out and we'll bring Brian Bradley in. Let's see if we got it there, right there. What's up, partner? How are you? Good, JP. How are you doing today? Just at the morning skate right now. Um, I'll flip the camera around. You can see the bolts on the ice right now. Nice. Uh, Nice. Everybody's in the lineup right now. 
which is good news. I'm watching uh, Victor Hedman, who didn't play, and Braden Point, who never played on Sunday. Yeah. Um, both are back skating right now in the morning skate. Um, looks like our lines are, are the same as probably what they were in the California trip, coming off, uh, what, 9 out of 10 points we got on the road trip for the boys. Dude, look at you, playing cameraman, flipping your camera. You are you are an absolute technological marvel. Look at you. I'm so proud of you, man. Look at look at us. Two old heads yeah. here getting it getting it done. I'm this I'm excited. Is, this, is, this is it. It's 2024, man. So <laughs> that good. Fantastic. Um, so so Pointer and, and Headman are back. That's huge. I mean, obviously to have those two guys back. Um uh, and I'm not, and maybe they were, maybe it's just a good time to rest them. Maybe it wasn't serious injuries. Um, and that's great. So it's good to see that those two guys are back out there tonight and we'll have a full compliment against Boston. Yeah. You know what? It's, uh, you know, been, they've been gone for what, five road games, you know, you know, beat Florida, then beat Vegas, you know, then, you know, one, you three, two out of the three lost to Los Angeles, picked up nine out of 10 points on the road, but big game tonight against the Bruins. Um, obviously, obviously, I think if the playoffs ended tonight, or if we started, we'd play Boston in the first round, but everything's going to flip around. Yeah. I watched a game last night. The Bruins uh, played Florida. Florida was the better team, but Boston ended up scoring two goals late in the third period to win 4-3. So, you know, I'm expecting a really good game, and you know what? Uh, I'm kind of happy that Tanner Juneau's back in the lineup because, you know what, guys aren't going to be running point, Kucherov, Stamkos, Hedman, like they have previous in games. Yeah, Brian, talk a little bit more about that. I don't think the fans really appreciate that. It's kind of a, you know, it's not like the old days, you know, where you had a few goons out there. And I'm not saying that Tanner's a goon. He's not. He he can play the game of hockey. No question. Yeah. He can score 20 goals. But his presence, his physical presence protects the other players, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's a, he's a physical force. I mean, there's not many guys that want to fight him. And, you know, <laughs> I've watched over the last few games, whether we played Philadelphia, Montreal, um, you know, even against Florida last weekend when we played down south, uh, they were taking shots at Kucherov, Point, Sam Bennett, to Chuck. Guys were taking runs at our star players, and, you know, we didn't have anybody in the lineup. I mean, Matt Dumba's pretty tough, but uh, you know what? Uh, we have to have guys that can step in and be held accountable. And you know what? If anybody on Boston wants to fight Tanner Joe tonight, bring it on because <laughs> he might knock you right out. I love it. I love it. So what do you expect from this game? And the last two, two out of the three games, I think that we've played with Boston, we've won in overtime. Um, so these two teams are pretty evenly matched, even though Boston's obviously had a better season statistically, but the lightning have been playing their best hockey with the addition of Duclair and Dumba. So how, how do you think we match up with the new guys against Boston? Oh, I think we do really well. I mean, it was great pickups. I mean, you know, you got to, like we talked about before, uh, Julian and Matthew Darsh, you know, our general manager, Julian Breezeball, picking up uh, Matt Dumba, defenseman, and, you know, Anthony Duclair has played exceptionally well with Braden Point and Kucherov. The chemistry has been very good. So, you know, it's exciting to watch those guys play tonight. Um, you know what? Uh, they played at home before, but you know what? I really like our trade, and there's a lot of people talking about the Lightning, you know, with this trade. Yeah. Picking up these two players, it changed the chemistry of their team, changed the dress room. Um, you know what? So we'll see what happens. But, you know, Vasilevsky's playing well, you know, defensively. I mean, you know what? Hedman's back in the lineup. I mean, to be honest with you, we sure do miss Sergachev. I know he's getting better, but yeah. he's a hell of a defenseman. You can't replace a guy like that, Sergachev. Brian Bradley joining us from the morning skate. Uh, you mentioned Duclair. I got to be honest with you. I never thought he was this good a scorer. I mean, the, the goals that he scored have been goal scorers goals. Um, I always knew he was fast and he was a pain in the ass to play against, but the way he, just his skill level has surprised me. Has that surprised you? Yeah. You know what? He's been in the league a while, you know, he's I think in Phoenix or Ottawa, then yeah. Florida, different places like that kind of been a journey, man. But you know what? He's a veteran guy. He's been, like I said, six, eight years in the NHL, um, you know, scored a couple 20 goal seasons, I think before. Wow. Um, so he knows how to put the puck in the net when you score 20 goals in the NHL. He's got great hands, and, you know, now that he's been a league allowed, and, you know, definitely getting some great opportunities with Point and Kucherov. Um, he's he burying the puck. So, I mean, those are good pickups. We need we didn't need young kids in our lineup. We need veteran guys right. that can produce. And I, I think that's a really good pickup for the Lightning. That's something we were missing, uh, you know, I think going forward. So, I, I, love, uh, I love the pickups, and I love Matt Dumb on defense. 
I mean, you know, he kind of fills a role in there with uh, Chernak and Hedman, and he, he's a physical pre presence, and he can fight too. Ryan Bradley joining us from the Morning Skate, Boston in the house tonight. Um, you know, and when when you look at the team now, at, at, since since these guys have arrived, I think they've played with more energy and they've played with more emotion as well. Is that something new guys can bring to a locker room? And can, obviously, you know, the Lightning have a lot of guys and familiar faces in there, but I think these guys, not only what they brought on the ice, but off the ice has been important. Your thoughts? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm just flipping the camera. You guys are watching nice. the morning on the podcast but yeah i love you know declare they definitely bring some energy uh you know matt dumba is a physical presence back there he fought the first game so i love the way they you know it just changed the culture of the dressing room and they're and they're not they're not they're not kids they've been in the league matt dumba's been in the league 10 11 years declare yeah. probably eight or nine so these guys have been around for a while they know the game they know the nhl they know the routine and stuff like that so uh you know what uh, uh here they are here's declare come down to two on one Right there, here he is coming down low, right in the corner, right there, Anthony Declare, right there on camera. There you but, go. Uh, you know, they're veteran guys who've been around the league. They want a chance to win. Remember, Declare went to the Stanley Cup Finals last year with the yeah. Panthers, so he's been around for a while. Yeah, these guys have been a godsend. Look at you. Now you're doing play-by-play, -play too. Now you're Brian Bradley play-by-play -play guy. This is outstanding. It's fantastic. Hey, um, so when the Bruins come in tonight, Obviously, uh, they've struggled a little bit on the power play, and the Lightning have been – their penalty kill is 29 out of their last 30. Um, what's been different on the penalty kill? Was that the Boston – our the, penalty kill? Our penalty kill, yeah, and their power play not as good lately. Yeah, you know what? We Like I said, you just – we got – you go through ups and downs over the course of the season with power play and penalty killing. Obviously, our power play has been exceptional. Uh, but the penalty killing, I think, has been, you know, good. It can be yeah. better, but – you, you just can't be perfect all season long, not especially in an 82-game schedule. Um, you know what? And all I can look at and say, the bottom line is we went on a five-game road trip, 10 points. We got nine out of 10 points. So I, I don't think you can be critical of anything with the line you're doing no. right now. Everybody's pulling on the chain, and everybody's going in the same direction. Are we going to see Duclair back with Kucherov and Point tonight, you think? Yeah, for sure. I saw the line combinations, and Duclair's playing with Point and Kucherov right now. Nice. And then uh, what else? We got Sorelli, and and uh, do you see the second lines? What, what lines did you I, see? I think it's Sorelli. I think if it, it, it's Sorelli, Hagel, and maybe uh, uh, Mikey Isamon or uh, uh, Nick Paul might be on that spot, or he might be on the third line. So and it, uh, that that's, that's the thing about yeah. And I and since the new guys have come in, it's the the lines are much deeper. We're getting more secondary scoring. Right, Stamkos moved down and and it's it's picked up his game a little bit. So. Um, tonight should be a wild one. What do you think of tonight? Well, you got a prediction for tonight? What do you think? Yeah, you know, I'm going to go the Lightning 5-2 win over the Bruins. Ooh, five, two. The Bruins won last night. Uh, they, I don't think the Bruins were good enough to beat. I thought the Bruins were lucky last night to beat the Florida Panthers. They ended up scoring two goals in the last probably three minutes to go ahead. But I'm going the Lightning win 5-2 tonight at home. I mean, the Bruins are happy they got a win yesterday. So let's just see what happens. All right, and they're on, they're on the back-to-back. -back. The Lightning uh, pretty rested off the road trip. All right, Brad, Brad, that was awesome, dude. Play by play, you gave us camera work, man. I'm gonna have to put a little something extra in the check tonight, no doubt. I'll see you in the uh, Emily. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you in the Chase Club or Channel Club. I can't beers wait. Beers on me. Check the, see you, JP. Have a great day. Go Bulls. All right, beers on me tonight. All right, thanks, buddy. The great Brian Bradley right there. How about that? That was that was exceptional. There's so much more than I I bargained for today. So now we got we we had Scott Reynolds from the owners' meetings. We got Bradley giving us camera work and play by play of Anthony Duclair. Where are you getting? Where are you getting this anywhere else? Where come on? Where are we getting? Especially for what you're paying for the show, you know, it's fantastic. We really appreciate those guys. Uh, uh, really outstanding work there. I I can't wait. I'll be obviously be doing my my bit tonight. Um, Bobby the Chief Taylor will be joining me for the post game show. Don't forget. If you're driving home um, or if you're just hanging out at home and you want a little bit more post game, uh, always tune in to the last call. We come on about 20 minutes, about a half hour after the game, after Greg Linnelli's, uh network post game show. They they do a lot of the player sound. And then we have the uh, Cooper press conference as well. But you get a great breakdown from Brian Engblom, um, who, you know, obviously has a little bit more time to develop than he does on TV. Um Come the game stories and really, really good. And Chief is great too. Chief will be filling in for Brian tonight since I think tonight's game is 
might be a national game. Valley's is not doing the game tonight, so uh, Chief will be uh, hanging out with me doing the post game show. You can hear that on the Strike 102.5 HD2, or you can hear it on the Lightning Audio Network. Just go to the app. If you don't have the Lightning app, download the app and just click on the uh, headphones there, and you can listen to it there. Also, I believe we're on TuneIn Radio. And, um, uh, yeah, I think that's where you can get it there. But the, the app is, is is the best way to get it. You can get find it on Twitter or just download it. All right, we will uh, take another break. We appreciate our sponsors for letting us go uh, commercial-free there for a little bit. Um, so we'll do a shout-out to the Jeeves Law Group, Bay Area Modern Medical Center, Italiano Insurance, 813-877-7799. The great folks at the Gold and Diamond Source, they're having their 40th anniversary sale right now. And if you're looking for a ring, an engagement ring or a baller watch, you know, looking for one of those Rolexes, new or used, they've got a great selection there. Uh, or any of your old gold jewelry or diamond jewelry that you're not wearing, you can bring it in. Um, they can resell it for you on consignment. You can make money that way. Or um, so if you have an old ring, maybe that you got from a dude that you want to sell, you know. You bring it in there. They'll take care of it for you. They'll give you money up front, or you can put it on consignment at the Golden Diamond Source. So, And they'll give you a, a great price for it because they have a lot of traffic. Obviously, they do a lot of sales there, so that's the best place. And you can trust them. You can trust them, folks. They've been there for 40 years. That's the deal. You don't know. You walk in any other jewelry shop, you have no idea if the cut, clarity, or any of that is what they say it is because you don't know, right? Uh, go to a trusted place, the Gold and Diamond Source. So we thank them. The Gettys Gordon Group. American Mortgage Services, Scott Fitzgerald, Clayton Heitler over there. Thanks, guys. And Sonovas Bank, all the great folks over there, John Acosta and that group. Thank all of our sponsors and our newest sponsor, Extravaganza Productions. And we'll tell you a little bit more about them on the other side of the break. Stay with us back in three. JP here for the Jeeves Law Group and my man, Scott Jeeves, who lives right here and has long been a highly respected member of our community. He's a proud sponsor of the Tampa Riverwalk. Jeeves Law Group is also a proud sponsor of our Grand Central District in St. Pete and has neighborhood events throughout the year. He has an office on Central Avenue in St. Pete and one on South Howard in Tampa. You can't get more local than that. So when you need an attorney, are you going to hire some huge firm that advertises all over the state or the one that supports your favorite sports show? It's the Jeeves Law Group. We're local, we're trusted, and we get results. For personal injury and personal attention, call us for a free case evaluation. That's 8889-JEEVES. That's 8889-JEEVES. All right, this is for all you guys who don't want to go to the gym and do 5,000 crunches. At Bay Area Modern Medical Center, you can get on the new True Body Machine where you can reduce fat and tone up your muscle. It's like doing 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Define your body as you see fit. True Body offers personalized muscle stimulation that delivers the equivalent of those 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Just get in touch with them at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. Chris Lugo and the team over there will set you up on True Body and get amazing results. Non invasive with comfortable and little to no pain and zero downtime. You can isolate and target those areas that you want to improve and treat multiple areas simultaneously. It's an amazing machine, so check it out at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, B-A-M-M-C dot com. Did you know Steve Weintraub founded the Gold to Diamond Source over 40 years ago by selling gold-plated sand dollars? And to celebrate, the Gold to Diamond Source is selling gold sand dollar jewelry with the proceeds supporting Julie and Steve Weintraub's foundation, Hands Across the Bay. Yes, in 1984, Steve opened their first location, expanded to nine stores as far as Atlanta, but now they've consolidated all that inventory under one roof, becoming one of the largest family-owned fine jewelry stores in the country. Julie, of course, joined forces with her husband 20 years ago, and they're going to celebrate by offering up the 40% off select jewelry items. Plus, with gold prices near all-time highs, it's the perfect time to trade in your broken or unworn pieces for something new and stunning. Unlock the value in your jewelry box today at the Golden Diamond Source. It's always one place, and it's always a great place. The Golden Diamond Source celebrating their 40th anniversary, 3800 Olmerton Road, always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. Let's go. Right now, back to the show on FanStream Sports. All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show here on this uh, on this hump day. Uh, Rich Hollenberg coming up at 1130 live from the trap. Wonder if he'll be doing that uh, camera work. That I'll challenge him. See if he can do some camera work like Bradley did. 
that was and some play by play. Well, you know, we can he can do that. So we're having fun with it this morning. We're so glad you guys are aboard with us. And a uh, huge sh- uh, shout out to all of our sponsors, including Extravaganza Productions. Uh, with over 34 years of producing small and large events, Extravaganza Productions is truly a Tampa treasure when it comes to creating some of the very best events in Tampa and all across the USA, from small meetings to exceptionally large corporate conferences. They do it all. They do galas, fundraisers, sporting events, grand openings, and they'll do your birthday party. They'll do your charity event. Uh, Team EPI has an extremely talented staff of designers and show producers that develop extraordinary events fueled by the visions of their clients. So if you have a great idea and you want to develop it, just don't know how, all you got to do is go to extravaganzaproductions.com, contact them through the website, through email, or you can call them as well. And please tell them JP sent you, 813-621-4700. They will give you a free uh, evaluation. They'll give you a free creative meeting and they'll sit down with you and say, here's what we can do, Uh, give you a cost and all that stuff. So go, it's free. Go meet with them. They'll show you the whole warehouse. It's really, really cool. And uh, you'll get some great ideas. So don't just have an ordinary event. Have an extravagant uh, a productions event. It's just absolutely fantastic what these folks can do. I work with them so many times. Extravaganza Productions. Um, all right. Let's get to some of the great comments here from you knuckleheads. Uh, of course, Rick had to pop in and say, JP, have you traded in all your rings from other guys? Not all of them. Not all of them. Uh, two, <laughs> two games to go in the regular season, and it's on to the playoffs. Um, 11 games to go in the regular season, then on to the playoffs for uh, for the Lightning. Do, do, do. I don't know why I said two. Um, Todd Bowles also took a couple of shots at Devin on the way out. Uh, I didn't see that. Did I see that? Was it Todd that took a shot at him? Remind me, Rick, um, if you can. Uh, Scott, just, uh, put the kids on. Oh, Scott, just put the kids on death on us. Re-injury on offense or lack thereof. There's no, just because somebody talks about people not being injured. It doesn't mean they're going to get in there. There is no curse. It doesn't work that way. Um, did Scott stock? I mean, talk with Shaw, the mustache or did Dan Lucas keep him away? I think Dan Lucas had him boxed out. I think he might've boxed out. Um, but that's the type of information you get here at the JP Peterson show, right? You just don't get that. You know, I mean, we got people hobnobbing with the, with the rich and powerful. Although I, I thought what Scott said about Mike Tomlin was pretty awesome because yeah, w- there've been lots of play coaches and players that have left this area. You know, you see them, you know, four or five, 10 years down the road when you know they, you were close or good friends or whatever. And they big time. Yeah. It doesn't happen often, but it, it happens. And you know, Mike T is not going to be one of those guys, just as genuine, and that's why he's such a good coach. You know, he's genuine. Guys guys see that and they feel it. He genuinely cares for his players. And that makes a difference. Uh, Yeez said, Yeezy said, Glazers said, no new stadium and they will try to upgrade Ray J. Just begging for shade. All we need is a tarp. I know, right? I, I got I to gotta get with Joel and uh, give him my idea. The drone tarp, right? These drones can do so much now. They can lift, right? So you have a drone tarp big tarp, and then you, you lift it up for, for day games, for the sun games, and then you just you can move the tarp, you know, with the sun and keep everybody shaded. Freaking brilliant. So, one of, you know, it's one of these uh, one of the many ideas, the things that I have invented that I, I will get no money for, like Top Golf. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure somebody will do this, and I'll get absolutely nothing. I'll get no credit for it. There's so many businesses out there, but that's okay. That's okay. Just need a few investors. That's all. Show up. It's the it's the drone tarp. How can, I mean, how can that not work? Right? You just pick it up. It, it shades shades it into perfectly. Keep it over the field so you don't have half covered and half not. Right? It just moves with the sun. It's freaking brilliant. The half covered and half not. So the TV it, it's all blown out. It, you can't see half the field. Right? Remember with the roof in in uh, Dallas and uh, now in Minnesota, same thing. The partly in um. We have that problem in uh, in Atlanta as well. So this way, the tarp just moves with the sun. Keeps the shade up. I'll talk to Joel about that. Um, Rick says, when asked for comment about Ray's having to stay, he mentioned Led Zeppelin. Communication breakdown. <laughs> Ramble on with two middle fingers up. <laughs> yes. Ramble on with two middle fingers up. Yes. 
that is in response to um, uh, my observation of Stu Sternberg picking Thunder Road for the season song. And the last line is, I've said this many times, for the new people, though, it's a town for losers, and we're pulling out of here to win. That's what he's doing, folks. He thinks you all are a bunch of losers. It's because you didn't give him everything you wanted in a stadium. Now he finally got a, uh, a mayor that's going to do that, and he's going to take you for all your worth, leave us with a terribly located stadium. He's never wanted to build in St. Pete until he got all this money from St. Pete. So, and now there's, we learned today in the Times article that there is no binding agreement yet in the paperwork in the, in the deal that will keep them here for 30 years. So Stu could get all the money up front and then leave. <laughs> Folks, why would you trust him? Why? He said for years, St. Pete's not a major league team and now it's a city and now suddenly it is. Think about it. He's telling you he's putting it out on, on blast with the Thunder Road thing. Be smarter, city council. You know, and, and look, we've um, talked to the guys at nohomerun.com, uh, Ron Diener, and um, oh god, I forgot the Tom Mullins. And we had him on the show. Um, we'll get we'll we'll get him back on the show and, and we'll we'll have a little bit more talk about these numbers. But the bottom line is this. The Rays are getting the 22 acres where the stadium is basically for a million dollars a year. Um, the tax rolls on that, if you just sold it to a developer, estimated at about $411 million that the city's losing out on revenue. $411 million. And then the other 66 or uh, 60 some acres, they're selling to the Rays um, at a reported price of $155. Um, the uh, Tom says the documents put it closer to a hundred million dollars and that property is probably worth on the open market, $700 million at least. So that's another $600 million giveaway. So if, if, if they were to follow the Rick Kreisman model and have a developer come in here and, and, and do what they, they would sell the land and get a, get a price for the land. Now the Rays would get half of that you know, up front because that's in their old lease, but the rest of it would be for the, the city. Um, so that would be a plus revenue right there. They wouldn't have to pay for the cost of building a stadium, which to the city of St. Pete's going to be over $700 million with interest and the County over $800 million with interest. So there's, um, 1.5, 1.6 billion right there with interest. You don't have to build a stadium. You know, the stadium doesn't bring in that much money as opposed to regular retail, regular, um, I, I wouldn't necessarily put affordable housing there because that's not a place for affordable housing. Find a place that's that's more, uh, better suited for it and with a bigger uh, footprint and you use that money, the windfall that you're going to make from developing this in the billions and you can build a lot more affordable housing in other places where the people who want to use that housing would be better suited. So it's a much better idea. Why force a location for affordable housing just because you want, from a political standpoint, you want it to look like part of the deal? It doesn't make sense to put affordable housing next to a stadium. You should have uh, more commerce there. That would make more money and pay for more affordable housing. Do it in a smart way. And then the bottom, the bottom line is $2.4 billion in public money over 30 years. What could you use that money for in St. Petersburg, and Pinellas County, re-nourishing the beaches, six, seven hundred million dollars in stormwater uh, drainage and and pump plumbing that needs to be redone. This is real cost stuff that they're not going to have the money for because they're building this stadium, or certainly will be tougher to find the money for, or they're going to have to raise taxes to do it. So, in any way you shake this this deal down, it's a shakedown. And the more and more things that come out, the the less good it looks. Um. A couple other things I want to get to. The story of Cam Sutton, <sighs> Hillsborough County resident. Um, if you haven't heard this one, it's it's bad. At his Lutz home, um, a few weeks ago, there was a 911 call. A woman um, said she was sexually battered and strangled, and that was at the home of Cam Sutton, who now plays for the Lions or did play for the Lions, and just signed a, a six-year, $33 million contract to play for the Lions. Uh he was, he fled that and was actually, when the story came out in Hillsborough County that he was wanted, he was at the Lions facility. 
He was at the Lions facility when he fled Tampa Bay and was working out. And like somebody had to come up to him and go, Hey, Cam, um, can we talk to you for a moment here? Uh, you got to leave. And we suggest you go turn yourself in to the Hillsborough County Sheriff. And he subsequently was cut. But man, if you're on the lamb, you know, this, not that any of my listeners need this advice because you're not going to be. Don't go work out at the facility. They, they'll they probably find out about it. They News travels. So they'll probably find out. Anyway, I um, hope that situation, everybody, uh, turns out well. Um, and for my good friend Christopher Cole, the Rays off the field is a shy show. It is indeed. Um, and that's, you know, that's the biggest thing that – I tried, we try to remember is that it could be so much better folks. It could be so much better. And you don't need to look any further than the Tampa Bay lightning and, and the, and the, and the bucks as well, because the Glazers have done a fantastic job as owners, especially in the last decade and a half. I know there were some tough times there when they were buying man United and maybe they weren't spending um, as much money as they should on the team. We've documented that, but since then, um, you could ask for better owners, you know, Super Bowl championship, Tom Brady gave him everything he wanted, gave the coaching staff, everything they wanted. Um, I think they've tra- treated the fans uh, incredibly well. I know some of you will have some issues with tickets and whatnot. You can't please everybody. I know we would rather have maybe more um, non-season ticket holders at training camp. I get that. Um, but I think the Bucks have done well by their season ticket holders. And, and I don't think their tickets are, their tickets are some of the cheapest tickets in the NFL. Be, become part of the crew and you'll get all the benefits. And then you'll love that the fact that you get the benefits and the rest of the people who don't want to be part of the crew don't. So I, I get it both ways, but I think the, the Bucks have done a tremendous job. And of course, the Lightning have always put the fans first and they've been rewarded with 300 plus consecutive sellouts. And because Jeff Vinnick does so much in the uh, in the community, he's given over $50 million to the community um, uh, with their Community Hero program. I mean, this is the template to work from put the money into the stadium and it's not hard. It's not rocket science. And if our baseball team and our owner would have wanted to truly partner with the community, then we'd already have a stadium done in Ebor city, a brand new stadium that looks great, feels great that everybody loves. And it would be producing money for the, the team, more money than they're making now in terms of revenue and more money for the city and the County. You know, that's like they did in Atlanta, a true public private partnership, build the stadium where the fans are. Duh. <laughs> and partner with the community and say, hey, Hillsboro, write us a blank check. No, we're not doing that. Partner with us and you'll make more money than you'll have you than you would ever make in St. Petersburg. But they don't want to do want to do that. He wants to take the money up front and run. It's a town for losers. We're pulling out of here to win. We hear you loud and clear. We're talking about it. Um Let's see what else we got here from James. All of a sudden, Colin Coward, a fan of Cousins, and says Falcons will win the NFC South. Never mentions his playoff record of throwing picks at crunch time. One thing for sure, he can't stand Baker. Oh, this is great news, James. This is great news. How bad do we want Colin Coward? That douche. <laughs> Sell out. How bad do we want him on the Falcons bandwagon and off, and not on the Bucks bandwagon? Love it absolutely love it count us out count us out we love it keep bringing it keep bringing it absolutely thank you for that james yes we'll revel in that i mean if you want to put your your eggs in the kirk cousins basket so be it listen if he's healthy uh he's a good quarterback they can protect him they could have a good season they have a good roster i'm not saying they're not you know should they be the favorite sure it's public right it's based on public perception um, but I would much rather be have the Bucks roster. I would much rather have the Bucks quarterback at the at the at the deal they have. I would much rather be in the Bucks situation than the Falcons situation. They put all their eggs in that basket. And if Kirk Cousins doesn't, you know, he has to find a, a way to play well in the playoffs and stay healthy at 36 years old. I, I'll take Baker at, at 28, 29 years old, uh, more mobile, better numbers last year. I mean, just better in the long run. So yeah. Um, James says, if St. Pete says Ray's deal is, is next, will MLB get involved? I think they will. I think they will. 
Um, I think they have to. And I, you know, I talked to Ken Hagen the other day. The, that deal is still on the table. They can they can save the deal in Hillsborough. Not for much longer. They might have to rework it and do something different, but there's always there will always be a deal to be had in Hillsborough County in a public private partnership. Not in a, a boondoggle giveaway like St. Pete is doing. There will always be a deal, a Braves like deal to be done somewhere in Hillsborough County if if Stu or whoever owns the Rays wants to do it. That's what I've that's what I've been told. Because and as you mentioned, the Rays, uh, the Bucks aren't, you know, knocking down the door for a brand new stadium. They've not. Um Yes, uh, you did miss the schedule for for the Lightning. Eleven games left. Uh, oh, I see what you said. Rick says Bull says Britt isn't running a forty. Doesn't have to be fast to be in position. When he lacks in speed, he makes up in being in position and understanding. You know where have we heard that before, Rick? Yeah, we've talked about that so much on this show. You know, if if you run a four three forty and you're heading in the wrong direction, you're just getting worse. <laughs> right? Give me the four or five guy who knows where to go over the 4-3 guy who, who's off freelance and doing whatever the hell he wants to make splash, splash plays to get paid. That's not how you win in the NFL, folks. People take advantage of that, and that's what they've done to Devin White for three years. So, yes, and, and I that, that was absolutely a shot at Devin White. He's not, you know, K.J. Britt is not a 40 guy. But it's also, you know, Bull saying that's a little rich. He's the one that kept Devin out there instead of playing K.J. Britt. So let's not forget that. <laughs> and I think Todd would probably say, maybe we went to that a little bit too late. I think you did. Um, James, how could say Pete approve Ray's deal and give him property basically for free? So they are going to trust Stu to develop the area around stadium? I don't think so. MLB should force Stu to take Tampa deal. Absolutely. It's it. <laughs> I invite you guys to take a little time and go to nohomerun.com and read the whole thing. You know, this is two real estate people who have done these huge deals before who have looked at the documents and put it in very plain language what Stu is getting and what St. Pete and Pinellas County are giving up. And it's a boon doggle. It's awful. Um, and again, it's not where the stadium needs to be for, for all Rays fans. Nobody wants, 80% of Rays fans want it in Tampa. Um. Recon Scout, uh, you must be new. Thank you, man. JP, words of wisdom. Appreciate you jumping in. Thank you, buddy. Uh, guess what the Lions overpaid for Carlton weeks ago? Yes, they did. Um, and I guess they must have known that was coming, right? Um, it was Cam Sutton. James says, Ray's starting pitching staff is weak this year. Could be an 80 or less win season. So you waste money, build a stadium and in St. Pete, and two years after, no one will show. Yeah, this is the thing that we have to remember. The Rays have been to the playoffs five straight years and attendance hasn't cha really changed. Now, last year it was up. I, I, I disagree because they brought ticket prices down. You know, they finally marketed the team and they brought ticket prices way down. That's why attendance went up last year. The $10 tickets, the other deals that they offered. So, yeah, that's that's why attendance went up um, and because they've been overcharging for so long. They finally made it easier to get in the, in the place. So, yeah, it just... If this team goes bad, you think nobody shows up now for the playoffs? This team doesn't make the playoffs? You know, even with a new stadium, folks, if 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 Stu keeps his state, if I don't think he's going to be the owner, but if he did and he kept with this crappy payroll, you're not going to win every year. We, you know, the Rays have, have, have been great the last five years, but yeah, this starting staff looks like it's really, really weak. And if it if they don't find a way, which they always do, they always do find a way to pitch well, then where are we going to go? Um, Rick says, if only Chris Thomas was given a chance to one-on-one -on -one was to, oh, what about me, Rick? Give me a chance, buddy. But yeah, Chris would, hey, he's my mentor. I would do the same thing that Chris, can you imagine? If Chris were still on the radio today, I, I would have to say, first of all, he'd be fired from 620 because uh, just like I was, because you can't talk this way about Stu at 620. Can't do it. Um, So, yeah, <laughs> he, he would be saying the same exact things I would be saying. I am saying, trust me on that. He would. Um, so hopefully you can live. And I don't say that with any um, arrogance at all. I I, I, and I I say it with knowing Chris the way I did is being one of my mentors. Um, I guarantee it because I heard him. I know what he I know what I know exactly what he would be saying. And that's one of the reasons why I do say this stuff, folks. Because, um, you know, 
you can hear what you want on corporate media. And this is why we do what we do. And we thank all of our sponsors for allowing us to do it. Um, they're not, they're not afraid. They're not going to try and silence me. So we appreciate them tremendously. And I, that's why you need to use them. If you appreciate what we say on this show and how bold we are to say the things that we say on this show, then use these, these supporters, please. And when you go there, tell them that you appreciate them or just put something on Twitter, send them a note, send them an email. Hey, I listened to the JP Peterson show. You don't have to buy anything from, him, and I really appreciate you being a, a, an advertiser and allowing his, his show to exist and he can speak truth to power. So I, I appreciate that. And I don't say that with any arrogance. I just say that with, this is what Chris Thomas would want me to do. Uh, we try to honor his legacy and those that came before him, the big dog that would speak the truth. So that's what we're trying to do here. And we appreciate all of you spread the word and please just drop a note to Jeeves Law Group, Bay Area Modern Medical Center, Italiano Insurance, the Golden Diamond Source, the Geddes Gordon Group, American Mortgage Services, Sonovas Bank, and Extravaganza Productions. And soon, Hydrate Heroes. We're looking forward to that. Big announcement coming up on Friday. We'll be live at McDill Air Force Base at the Hydrate Heroes tent. And uh, we'll have a great announcement there. So um, we look forward to that. Michael Gardner and the great team over there. I'm going to meet with them today in Clearwater at their offices. So we look forward to them jumping aboard as well. Um, All right. We will take a break. Come back on the other side. Rich Holliberg coming up in just a little bit. So um, stay with us for that. We're going to take you live to the trap for Rich Hollenberg. JP here for the Jeeves Law Group and my man, Scott Jeeves. If you're going to hire an attorney, do you want some guy looking for a quick settlement and a quick buck, or do you want an attorney with some chops? Scott is a board-certified civil trial lawyer and a certified circuit court mediator. Been practicing in the Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. He is a peer-reviewed AV preeminent rated civil trial lawyer. They just don't hand out those classifications. He's been the lead class action counsel on many complex consumer protection cases and has handled hundreds of serious personal injury cases. He's dedicated his career to protecting injured victims and is committed to vigorously representing you. We're local, we're trusted, and we get results. Personal injury and personal attention. Call for a free case evaluation. That's 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. The Jeeves Law Group. JP here for the Geddes Gordon Real Estate Group and our good friend Jane Geddes. Folks, simply put, there is nobody like Jane. Jane is a former LPGA two-time major championship winner. She was also vice president of talent relations at WWE. She also has a law degree from Stetson. So if Jane can drain a 10-footer to win the U.S. Open and stare down Hulk Hogan in the boardroom, you want Jane on your real estate team to not only negotiate the best deal, but find you the perfect home or investment property. And when you work with the Geddes Gordon Group, you become part of the real estate family and get concierge services that include expertly staging marketing and preparing your home for sale. Advice on golf properties. Hey, you might even get some golf tips. Many of their clients become friends long after the sale or purchase is completed. It's all part of the deal. So if you're looking for that perfect home or investment property or trying to get top dollar for your home, go with Jane Geddes and the Geddes Gordon Group because there's nobody like Jane. Call 813-485-6808 or go to geddesgordon.kw.com. That's G-E-D-D-E-S gordon.kw.com or call 813-485-6808. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on FanStream Sports. All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show here. As uh, we roll on on this Wednesday, we'll be uh, hopefully checking in with Rich Hallenberg here in a little bit. So far, so good as we produce the show uh, 
solo here. Um, our big thanks to the great folks at uh, Sonovus Bank. We mentioned some of our uh, our great sponsors. Sonovus Bank is the big bank that makes you feel like uh, it's a real small local bank, uh, like the old days when we had the the the, the community banks, right? Well, a lot of people that worked in those community banks now work at Sonovus Bank. That's the way they like it. and want you to come in there and feel like this is a small community bank and that you matter because you do there at Sonovus Bank. So go to Sonovus.com and uh, just look up your local branch. Go on in there, ask for John Acosta or any of the great folks, and they will help you get your new personal account or your new business account uh, ready to go. And they will serve you anytime you call. They'll let you, uh, they'll let you, they'll pick up the phone and help you out with anything you need. That's Sonovus.com. Um, I was just looking uh, at some of the uh, uh, NIL deals that have been reported. And it says the top earners in the NIL field for um, the NCAA tournament and Caitlin Clark earning the most at $3.1 million in NIL. Uh, Angel, Angel Reese is second at LSU with $3.1 million. Um, the third is another LSU player. Uh, where I lost it. Where is that? Anyway, the third one was another N uh, NAL uh, was LSU player, female, and number four, and number five were the first male players in the NCAA tournament at about a million. So the women are making more than the men in the NIL field. How about that? That's pretty crazy. Um, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, what else do we want to get to? Oh, Jaden Daniels Pro Day is today. I'll be very interested to see. Uh, if he is still the second ranked quarterback after his pro day, because believe it or not, and we've seen this with Camp Newton, we've seen this with a lot of these quarterbacks, they go out in their pro day and they do, you know, do crazy stuff, even though it's not real football, and they rock it up a draft board. Um, we saw it a little bit with JJ McCarthy, right? So it's kind of the flavor of the day, but I'll be interested, you know, once Jane Daniels puts his talents on front street. If Caleb Williams is still, you know, the consensus number one, because I mean, Caleb Williams has kind of been the consensus number one for a while. And I always wonder why that is like a guy jumps out front and then kind of stays there. It's like, even though Jay Daniels had a much better season statistically uh, and put together two great back to back, but his second year in a system and with, with the same uh, cast around him, you know, Jane Daniels put up humongous numbers at LSU. And I saw him play twice with my own eyes. And I can just tell you, that dude, I think, is better than Caleb Williams. Yes, his frame is a little bit more frail, but you know he throws the ball better than Caleb Williams does. I think he moves better than Caleb Williams. I think he runs better than Caleb Williams does. So you know, we'll see if if, if some of the scouts agree uh, if Jaden Daniels is still the number two guy. And we're all the mock drafts now are coming out, and these other quarterbacks are getting up into the mix as well. You see, Bo Nix now mocked into the first round. You see Michael Penix mocked into the first round. J.J. McCarthy mocked into the first round. And by the way, all of these guys going before the Bucks pick at 26. So that's good stuff. So the, the more <laughs> more quarterbacks jump in the first round ahead of the Bucks, uh, the better off we're going to be. Um, all right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. It looks like we got Rich Hollenberg lined up at the Trop. So stay with us. Three minutes back with Rich Hollenberg from the Trop. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. Start the new year with a new diamond from the Gold and Diamond Source. It's still engagement season. Where better to get that special ring than the Gold and Diamond Source? Of course, I just got mine there. I'm engaged. You should do the same thing. Let's go. Gold and Diamond Source has the largest selection of engagement rings in the country. A literal jewelry superstore with 30 times the inventory of any normal jeweler. And if you have a loved one or 
or a special person in your life who has a birthday this month, maybe you have an anniversary coming up, you can get 15% off the January birthstone, which is Garnet, as in Garnet and Gold for all your Seminoles. Celebrate that mythical national championship. And it's the Golden Diamond Source's 40th anniversary for the past 40 years. They have taken pride in offering only natural diamonds formed over billions of years from the Earth's incredible forces. And gold prices are at an all-time high. Now's your chance to turn your jewelry box into a cash machine. It's the perfect time to trade in your broken or unworn pieces for something new and stunning. It's the Golden Diamond Source, 3800 Omerton Road, always online at thegoldendiamondsource.com. JP here for the Jeeves Law Group, J-E-E-V-E-S. Call for a free case evaluation, 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. We're local, we're trusted. The law firm brings over 80 years of combined legal experience focusing on clients in Tampa Bay, the state of Florida, and national class action cases. If you're injured, get that free case evaluation, no cost to you. The Jeeves Law Group's focus is on auto, truck, and motorcycle accidents, as well as class action and consumer protection law. Scott Jeeves is a board-certified civil trial lawyer and a certified circuit court mediator practicing in the Tampa Bay area for over 30 years. You hear him on the show all the time. Great guy, big Gator fan, and great for the community. The Jeeves Law Group is a highly skilled team with years of experience that will apply their skills, expertise, and knowledge to assist individuals who have been in an accident with compensation for damages, lost wages, medical expenses, pain and suffering, and property damage. Get that free case evaluation, 888-9-JEEVES. That's 888-9-J-E-E-V-E-S. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on Fans Dream Sports. All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show here on this hump day, a historic day in Tampa Bay as I go solo and produce the show. And so far, I'm two for two on getting guys on the show. So here we go with Rich. I can see him and I can hear him. What's up, Rich? How are you? What's up, brother? This is uh, oh. I didn't know. I didn't know this was historic. It is historic. So I had. So I had uh, Scott Reynolds on talking bucks uh, from his uh, – I was hoping he was going to be live at the owner's meeting, but he was back, but that's fine. So we had him on TV, and then we had Brian Bradley live from uh, from uh, Morning Skate for the Lightning, and he was, like, flipping the camera around. Don't mean to, you know, challenge you in any way. Oh doing, play by, doing play by play, and I'm like, oh, these old heads are getting it done here. This is, a, this is historic stuff. And now I got you on from the trop, so – uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm feeling pretty good about myself here, yeah. and I thank all how of my you, great friends for making this happen. You, how could you possibly tell I'm at the Trop? I have no <laughs> idea how you could tell that I'm at Tropicana Field right now. That, that's well, that's not an iconic about. roof or anything, but uh, you know what I can see behind you that looks fabulous is the What's new up? rug. Yeah, the new rug it looks good. Oh, oh, this. No, oh, you're talking about the oh. <laughs> okay, I got you. Uh, no, the the new turf. Look, I haven't been on it yet. But yeah. the new turf looks elite. It, yeah. it is a real fresh new look. And that's one thing. Look, you could joke. You could criticize. You could say what you want about this field, about this stadium. Every single year, they put money into making yeah. it look better, making it play better, making the fan experience better. Um, this should be a national holiday tomorrow. I know I'm yes. not alone in feeling that. But how awesome is it that it's opening day, and the Sweet 16 and March Madness all oh in one Thursday. I am fired up. Yeah, I'm like I'm glad my show's in the morning and I can watch everything in the afternoon. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, and I think it does. I think the feel makes a huge difference because I never, to be honest with you, and like the old one, it looked plastic. This thing looks really, really rich, and it looks like a real baseball feel. And you know, I I like it when you guys are playing on real fields, and I think it makes a huge difference to the eye. I'm not there. I mean, it'll be different when I'm there. So. I mean, I've just seen it behind you and on TV, but to you, it makes a stark difference. That I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. It's that's huge. That's tremendous. Right. So I do and think it makes a big difference. That's seeing it on streaming. Uh, seeing yeah. it in person is pops. it's impressive. It's yeah. impressive. It does. That's the perfect word. It yeah. pops. Um, and I think you know the question now is going to be: Does it play any different? And if it is different, how different is it? for the players. I don't know how much different it's going to be for the outfield, but mm -hmm. there could be a difference for the infielders. And uh, that remains to be seen. All I know is that however different it is for our dudes, it's going to be yeah. different for the opposing players too. So yeah. it's a level playing field regardless. 
Yeah, this might have been a good year to have spring training in the trop with the new with the new carpet. Absolutely. Um, but you know, they they got a, they'll get a couple games on it, right? Before right. they uh, before they play. So that that's good. And just judging from the comments, I think Bilal said it was slower, but it's yeah. more true. It's more true. And that's what that's what the players want, right? More than anything, they just want a true bounce. The speed is, you know, it is what it is. You get used to it, but just give me a true bounce, right? Right. Uh, the one the one question is this is now year two of the new base stealing rules and right. the bags being bigger and things like that. So how is that going to affect strategy? Not just mm-hmm. gameplay, but strategy. It's yeah. I, I think it's fascinating. It just adds another interesting wrinkle to opening day and beyond. Yeah, and I think without question, the speed up uh, speeding up of the game last year was was universally loved. Oh. Um, you know, and year two, and I think the Rays certainly, you know, from a base path standpoint, and you know, you knew they'd be ahead of the of the game on the new rules. So maybe other teams catch up a little bit this year. They could. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I think you have to look at roster construction. Yeah, and the Rays had speed relatively yeah. up and down their lineup. I mean, it wasn't just one guy stealing 60 yeah. bags that led them to be the second best base stealing team in the American League last year. Uh, it's kind of easy to forget how incredible offensively this Rays team was, and they have virtually everybody back, plus a healthy Brandon Lau. Obviously, yes. Josh Lowe being on the aisle to start is an ideal. Jonathan Aranda being on the aisle to start is not ideal. So where does the left-handed pop come from? Uh, listen, hopefully those two guys will be back sooner yeah. than later. It's a long, long season. Uh, but I, I think having Brandon Lau healthy is once again going yes. to be a key to the season. Uh, no question. Do you sense any additions? Um, I know they've been looking for a left-handed infielder. Nothing announced yet today, obviously. But maybe they'll bring somebody in from the outside. It, it, it's possible um, at this stage of the game, it would be a little um, for, this is just my word to describe it. It would be a little uncomfortable. Obviously yeah, you go yeah. through an entire spring training and then have to acclimate to a new team, a new environment, all of yeah. that. But you know, the race JP, they are yeah. constantly working behind the scenes to put the best product on the field. And if they feel like they need it, that's what they'll do. I always harken back, to Eric Neander telling me this a few years ago when they were just starting out this run of five straight postseasons. And I had him on the set, and it was before we came on the air. And I wanted to talk to him off the record just to really kind of take the temperature of what was going on around the trade deadline. And he's like, look, Rich, we think we're good enough to win in the postseason. It's up Mm -hmm. for these guys to prove that now. And I think that's their mindset. They're not going to, you know, carve this team up come the trade deadline because they know they're going to be competitive around then and they don't need to make that many changes to up the ante i i think baltimore right now is the odds on favorite in the american league east but outside of them i i think the rays are as good if not better and this is all on paper but as good if not better than any other team in the american league east for sure Rich Hollenberg joining us live from the trap um i'm a little concerned about the starting pitching because of all the the injuries. Um, and it is interesting. You say at the deadline, they're going to get hopefully Jeffrey Springs and Rasmussen back, which is like making two huge trades, right? If they can right. get those guys back, but the, to start the season and, and Pepio yesterday pitching well, I think was huge. Uh, I think he went, uh, what had eight strikeouts, only two hits allowed one walk. Is that, you know, that he's got to be good. He's got to be good for them to, I think have, have a chance. Right. So what, give me a, your take on the starting pitching. Uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, I think offensively and bullpen-wise, you could look at this Rays team and say, this doesn't remind me of many off-seasons coming into a regular season, if only because there are a lot of familiar faces back. Yes. Usually, yeah. Rays fans have to get used to a whole new roster every right. single season. That's not the case this year, and I think that's a really good sign that they kept the guys they think were important, were valuable. They had young talent who was getting better and entering their prime. And you could say the same for the bullpen. Last year, it was the island of misfit toys. Yeah. This year, it's a strength. Again, yeah. I think the big question mark, to your point, is the starting rotation. I don't think there are doubts for me about the starters, but I think there are questions. A, is Zach Eflin going to stay healthy for a, th- a full 30 to 35 starts, like he did almost all of last right. year? B, 
What's Shane Boz going to be like? What's Taz Bradley going to be like when they finally get healthy and get into that rotation? Because they will be yeah. key components of this starting rotation. C, is Aaron Savali going to be worth that trade deadline deal that they made for him yep. last year? Remember, he was essentially the number two guy. Bieber's the number one guy in Cleveland last year. Right. But Savali was right behind him at number two. That's what the Rays need him to be. They don't need him to be an ace. They right. need him to be quality number two. Will yeah. he be that this year in his first full season working with Kyle Snyder and Kevin Cash and company? So a lot of question marks for this team. And then you have the uncertainty of all the injuries coming back. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned Springs and Rasmussen. That could be an embarrassment of riches. Yeah. Let's hope that that's what we're describing it as once this season gets into the first few months and those guys are ready to contribute again. And you mentioned a lot of guys coming back. I think I read today that there's going to be 10 guys on this roster 30 years or older. I mean, wow. It's just like now the people of St. Pete can really uh, identify with this as we get older. These guys are getting Social Security, <laughs> right? 30 years that's old? Right. We got 10 guys over 30 years old? When has this ever that's, happened to the That's Rays? right. Get the AARP on the line <laughs> for this team. Um, I feel that way sometimes now yeah. coming into my uh, second decade how about that? Team on TV. But listen, I, I, I think there is something to be said for veteran presence. I think there's something to be said, as much as I hate to admit it, for uh, the management of games played. You know, you hear about that so much, and yeah. the NBA takes so much criticism for it. But I think you're starting to see more of that in Major League Baseball, too, JP. Um, in terms of, you know, in basketball, it's minutes played. Right. In baseball, it's innings played, innings yeah. pitched. And I think you're going to see that, especially with uh, the veteran presence that you have on this team, much more so than the last few years when the Rays were always in, at very least, the upper third of youngest teams in the American League, if not all of baseball. Yeah. Rich Hollenberg joining us from the TROP here. Uh, any other new stuff at the TROP? Uh, I mean, they, they've done such a great job of putting, you know, with what they can use, right? They've done it. The center field is awesome. Any other new points uh, to, to Tropicana Field? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that, JP. Yeah. Um, there will be certainly food and bevy updates that yeah. we'll be talking about as the season goes on. But one thing I can tell you is because of some time changes to starting times, uh, during the weekdays when games are starting, obviously at night, not day games, but weekday night games at home will mm -hmm. be starting now at 6.50 instead of 6.30. Okay. The reason I bring that up is our pregame show is starting at 6 o'clock like it did all of last year. So there is no change to our start time on Ray's live pregame with me and Doug. Nice. What we are doing is adding an extra 15 to 20 minutes to our pregame show. And in that extra 15 to 20 minutes – Yes, we'll be talking baseball. Yes, we'll be taking deeper dives and doing interviews. But we're going to have some fun in those 15 or 20 I minutes, it. too. I and love some it. Some of the stuff that is new and fresh and interesting around Tropicana Field is bound to make it in to that time frame, too. So something to look forward to uh, when you're watching Valley Sports. I smell some Trisha Whitaker features. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, Nothing I do. Nothing is off the board, JP. <laughs> Everything's in play. Except the JP Peterson commentary segment. That's off the board. <laughs> but other, other than that, I would simply get, well, that's great. You guys need more time because I, I kind of feel like you, you kind of got to shoehorn a lot of stuff in. So, uh, we let, let it breathe a little bit as we like to say in the business, right? Absolutely. We could do that, but chances are Wechter's going to suck all the air out of that pregame show. Like he, <laughs> well, he, he needs his space, you know, he needs to be able to explore the space. Give him a cowbell or two. It'll right. be fantastic. It'll be, it'll be fantastic. All right, uh, Rich, uh, any other things you want to throw out here that we may have missed here as we get closer to opening day? Um, opening day is, you know, like I said, it's one of my favorite days of the year. Everybody is undefeated. Everybody has a chance to make history in the postseason. Yeah. But again, I, I thought we were going to talk a little March Madness too. I'm just as excited. I forgot about that. that. Yeah, no. Yeah. So, what? Do you, give me your uh, give me your thoughts on the Sweet 16. Who's left? I, I think it's dynamite because I think everybody was thinking this year is going to be bananas and all these upsets are going to happen. You look at the Sweet 16, it's and it's all chalk yeah. except for a couple of teams. 
that's yeah. it. Yeah. And that's usually how I pick when I fill out my brackets. That's oh. usually what I do. I pick lots and lots of upsets early, but chalk late. And I take some heat from my friends and stuff like that. Like, oh, you're a bandwagoner. You're riding the hot teams. You're smart. My problem is, <laughs> actually, JP, I am quite the opposite. I think I'm a little too close to the content. Yes. And I pick tons of upsets. And it's the other upsets that come through, not mine. So my brackets are dumpster fires after the first Thursday and Friday <laughs> okay. night. Now I can sit back. I got half of my teams that I picked still in the Sweet 16. I don't think that's very good or admirable. Hmm. But I just can't wait for some of these matchups. One thing to watch for, JP, and I don't want to jinx either of these teams, but if Houston wins and if, uh, if Marquette wins, that's going to set up a 1-2 seed in their region, in the South region. Yeah. That is Houston versus Marquette for a right to go to the Final Four. In my opinion, those are the two best point guards in the country, Jamal Shedd and Tyler Kolick. That is going to be a point guard clinic if those two teams can win their Sweet 16 games. All right. And who you got? You got UConn winning it all like everybody else? I, I do. Um, and I have UConn and Tennessee in the national championship game. Now, have you done any? Uh, uh, did you do any Tennessee games this this year? I know you do no, most of the Big Twelve. No, I'm, I'm I'm all Big Twelve, but uh, I used to cover the SEC years back when Rick Barnes was just taking over that program, and I know what Rick Barnes does and likes to do. And I think this year, listen, last year they were Final Four good and they got upset. Yeah. I think this year they're on a mission and they have most of those players back. And they have Dalton Connect, who is He's a so difference good. maker. Yeah. And you need one of those dudes, one of those horses that you could ride, especially when you get into the second weekend in the NCAA tournament. And Dalton Connect is that dude. So that's one of the main reasons why I like Tennessee to advance. All right. All right. We shall see. Uh, there he is. We're talking March. We got we shoehorned in the March Madness, too. Hey, Rich, thanks for taking the time. It looks great. Thanks for uh, showing us the field and everything and your expertise. And you'll be part of history today. We're going to send this to the uh, live stream podcast Hall of Fame. So you'll be part of it. I appreciate it. When I get my podcast. You've got a real future as a producer, JP. <laughs> thanks. Finally. I finally found something I can do. Thanks, Rich. Appreciate it, buddy. Take The great uh, Rich Hollenberg there. You know, it's uh, I, I we joke here today, but um, it's because of those guys. You know, Scott and Rich and Brian. I really appreciate their time and being out there and, and willing to do this and share it with you guys because they're they're exceptional dudes. All of these guys love what they do, man. They love what they do. They're not just doing it to be famous or be on TV or be any stuff. You can tell that they love what they do. They love talking about their sport. They love talking about their teams. And they they do it for you guys, and I really appreciate what they do. Um, and they we are able to bring this to you on a on a daily basis. So I hope you guys enjoy it and send them a note. As I ask you to send uh, send them a note um, to my sponsors, do the same to to Brian Bradley and, and Scott Reynolds and and Rich Hollenberg. Say hey, it's just saw you on the JP show. We really appreciate you doing that and taking the time to do it because um, we do we do, and we got so many great people in this market, and that's why. I love Tampa Bay. It's unlike other places in the world, folks. It just is. Um, so many genuine people. Um, it's a, still a very, in my mind, blue-collar uh, place to live, and people are down to earth, and and I, and I love it. Uh, so much more than Miami, so much more than some of these other places, and it's because of guys like that, and we appreciate them tremendously. All right, well, uh, we've got a few more minutes left. We're going to take one more break, and then I'll come back, and i got a couple of thoughts on um, – Pete Rose in the news, the P Diddy thing in the news. We may have to talk a little bit about that, what's going on. Um, so we'll do that when we come back. Stay with us. JP here for my friends at your local Synovus Bank. And I do mean friends, and I do mean local. One of the local managers in Tampa is John Acosta, big fan of the show, and I've known him for over 40 years. He's been in local banking since 1983. You talk about developing relationships. You don't stick around for that long unless you you're doing things the right way and have a great reputation. And that's the focus company-wide at Synovus. Big enough to handle any complex international transaction, but small enough to answer the phone when you have an urgent question about your business or personal account. And for personal accounts, they have a very easy app that works great. You can do everything online. And for large or small businesses, you will get that personal touch and services to help build your business, taking your dreams and aspirations from the whiteboard to reality. 
We can make that happen. Let us show you how. For a get acquainted meeting to open a business or personal account, just call John or go to synovus.com to find out where your local branch is. All right, this is for all you guys who don't want to go to the gym and do 5,000 crunches. At Bay Area Modern Medical Center, you can get on the new True Body Machine where you can reduce fat and tone up your muscle. It's like doing 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Define your body as you see fit. True Body offers personalized muscle stimulation that delivers the equivalent of those 54,000 crunches in just 15 minutes. Just Get in touch with them at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. Chris Lugo and the team over there will set you up on True Body and get amazing results. Non invasive with comfortable and little to no pain and zero downtime. You can isolate and target those areas that you want to improve and treat multiple areas simultaneously. It's an amazing machine, so check it out at Bay Area Modern Medical Center, BAMMC.com. Everyone knows Italiano Insurance is your go-to for home insurance, but they also have an amazing team that focuses on business insurance. Yes, your business is most likely your biggest asset, so make sure you have the right coverage at the most competitive price. And if you started a side hustle recently, don't forget you need business insurance because if you get sued in this over-litigious society we live in, you could lose all your personal wealth. So get that business insurance. And for the best customer service, always choose Italiano. My representative, Charity, is amazing. I called her late on a Friday because my insurance was going to lapse. She stayed late until the job was done. You just don't find that anymore. Give them a call, 813-877-7799. That's 813-877-7799. Italiano Insurance. Let's go. Right now. Back to the show on Fan Stream Sports. All right, welcome back to the J.P. Peterson Show here on this uh, hump day. We appreciate you guys jumping aboard for uh, a few minutes and um, and our commenters as well. We'll get to some of you fellas here in just a second. I was just uh, going through some of the Sweet 16 matchups. I just, you know, as, as you know, if you listen to the show, folks, we haven't done a lot on the Sweet 16. So um, I just I have a hard time getting the college hoops these days. But UConn. We'll play San Diego State, a um, little rematch there. Uh, San Diego State, of course, going to the Final Four last year and UConn uh, winning it all. Just UConn, just so good and so deep and so well coached. It's just, it's hard to pick against them. I mean, that can have an off night. That's, and that's the tournament, right? You just, you know, one game is all it takes. Uh, Illinois and Iowa State. Um, I mean, Iowa State, the Cyclones, like, what is up with this, this program? They're good at everything. Right, the women's the women are in the final sixteen. If I'm not John Hill, you'll you'll certainly correct me. They're in the final sixteen. Their football team won a bowl game, had a great year, um, and now their basketball team is a two seed, taking on Illinois. Crazy, um, North Carolina and Alabama. That should be interesting. Carolina is an interesting team. They they you know they played games. They should have lost to Florida State uh, one of those times, and Florida State was not that great. Speaking of which, Clemson. FSU smoked Clemson, and here they are in the Sweet 16 taking on Arizona. That um, I think that that little run's going to come to an end. Um, so Clemson, North Carolina from the ACC, um, and then we have uh, Houston and Duke, another so three ACC teams in the Final 16. Houston, I just I don't have a lot of. Um, I mean, they just play so good defensively, but offensively they just seem challenged at, at times. The team, other team gets hot, like Duke who can. Knock down threes. Um, I think I might have to take Duke in that game. NC State and Marquette. So four ACC teams in the final 16, sweet 16. Marquette, as uh, Rich mentioned, really, really good uh, backcourt. Um, so I don't. I think the Cinderella run for NC State's coming to a, a quick and uh, unceremonious end. And Purdue with Zach Eady, you know, watching them play the other night, they're just against Utah State. They're just they're deep. They can shoot the three. Zach is such a freaking post presence, and he just he's a double double machine. Um, he's got that nice little jump hook in there. You know, they're just a really good, well balanced team. They you know they've lost so, or Matt Painter has lost in this team early on. You just don't you just you're waiting for the stinker to hit. But they played really well so far. And Gonzaga, not the team they used to be, but still uh, pretty damn good. So that'll be an interesting matchup. And then Creighton. The Blue Jays from Omaha, Nebraska, taking on uh, Dalton Connect in Tennessee, uh, a two versus three matchup there. So 
Um, you know, Tennessee only scored 62 points against Texas, which is very unlike Tennessee. They can fill it up. So um, that should be a good matchup as well. So that's your, those are your sweet 16 matchups uh, coming up. Um, oh, I, I saw a couple posts on uh, uh, Pete Rose. The Pete Rose now in the news after the Shohei Otani. And he's like, Pete Rose, If I, I think I actually said this. If I only had an interpreter back in the day, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. And I think that's true. Uh, the Otani thing is just bizarre, uh, as bizarre as can be. I, I, I don't believe for one second that he wasn't involved in, in betting. But then again, I also don't think that um, it's that big a deal. If he's not betting on baseball, he's betting on other sports. Um, now he shouldn't be betting illegally. That's that's where you get into trouble. That's where you get into trouble, and and then you're forced to maybe do some things that you shouldn't be doing. Um, let me get to some of the comments here. Uh, to, 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 uh, they could have had Snead for the Chiefs for the same price uh, as Carl, uh, Carlton Davis. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Know. Maybe they didn't think he was available. Uh, yes, you were way off, Christopher Cole, but we love you. Rick says, if only Chris Thomas gave him the chance to one up. Yes, I, I would I would love to see that and, and be part of it, be quite honest. I would just love to see Stu have to do a, like a real press conference like he did on Zoom, and I got a couple questions in, which would be great. And, I mean, if you're going to if you're gonna have a, a, a deal with the taxpayers for $2.4 billion, can you not just stand in front of the, the media and answer some questions from everybody? I mean, seems like, I mean, he's a lot smarter than us, so but what's he worried about? Um, James says, I just don't understand how St. Pete mayor can take this deal and screw taxpayers. Uh, all he has to do is look at Miami and how that worked out. The lunacy needs to end. I agree, man. You know, and if, if for you, and from a, from a political standpoint, if he's thinking that his career is going to be ruined because he quote loses the raise, it's the other thing. Uh, it's the other way around. If you do this deal. Like all those Miami politicians, when it was, you know, they they did the same thing there, kept the deal quiet so nobody knew what it was all about until it was too too late. And then they saw that, you know, they end up paying $2.5 billion for the stadium because the financing was so corrupt and the deal was so corrupt. And this is, you know, it's starting to look a lot like the same thing. What all, why all the secrecy? Why all the secrecy through this? It's It's bizarre, to say the least. Uh, Christopher Cole, Rays in Tampa should build a stadium at the Yankees complex and make the Yankees find somewhere else to go. I mean, I've always said I'd like to have, you know, two or three series a year over in, uh, in Hillsborough County at that stadium in April and May when the weather is nice. Um, just, you know, cover up the Yankee stuff with a bunch of Rays, uh, uh, signs and you'd sell that you'd sell it out from a season ticket, like a Hillsborough season ticket. It'd be awesome. Uh, Rick says Rich can have beer flights from around the trop during the last 15 minutes of the show. If the race start losing, let's talk on the show. More drinking. <laughs> um, Rich, 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 I think by not a not a huge drinker. Now, Wechter, I don't know. That could be fun. Um, John Hill says second best point guard is Lipsy of Iowa State. Um, well, good luck to your Cyclones there, my friend. Look forward to that. Um, Another couple that one did a couple of uh, notes here from the Joel Glazer press conference. Uh, Rick Stroud did a Q and A. He did a Q and A with the media, and they had it in the Times today. Um, a couple interesting things. That he was asked about uh, how fortunate it is to have Baker Mayfield step into Tom Brady's shoes. He said Baker stepped up and really did a great job fulfilling that role. Some very difficult footsteps to follow. Everyone embraced him. The team embraced him. The community embraced him. So it was a great transition. Hard to do, but. Uh, he successfully did it. I agree. I don't think he gets enough credit for that. Um, it's hard to do. And he, he, you know, with the exception of some knuckleheads in the media, like Colin Coward, I think universally he has been praised and even Collins, I, you know, given him his due for what he, what he did last year, but you know, good, good on you. Get on that Falcons uh, train. It'll be fun. Um, do you plan any more improvements to Raymond James stadium? Uh, Joel Glazer says that's something all teams are looking at, making sure they keep the fan experience up to date things have changed over the years all sports teams have put an emphasis on that we did a bunch of improvements seven to eight years ago always looking to upgrade and improve and we'll continue to do that um he said rjs is nearly 25 years old will you be needing a new stadium soon he said that's not something we're looking at uh what we have uh now um we can we can improve it that's great isn't it it's great to hear owners say that and um 
I appreciate that because, of course, they could put a lot of public pressure on. It's just not needed. Um, I, like I said, the drone tarp. Let's go. We can do this. We have the technology. It'd be fun. I, I'm, <laughs> I've got to have an engineer look at this. I'm just just spitballing. We're just spitballing. I mean, there'll probably be some wind issues, you know, but you could have some holes in the tarp to mitigate that a little bit. I think it'd be interesting. That would, you know, conceptually, am I way off base here? We'll see. <laughs> I'm getting an engineer on the show. We'll talk about it. It'll be fun. Maybe we'll come up with an invention. All right. Our, our sincerest thanks to all our guests today. Scott Reynolds, uh, Rich Hollenberg, and Brian Bradley, all uh, using their technology to give us a historic show today, which I think is. Uh, so we really appreciate you guys watching it. Please share the show if you can. Let everybody know what's going on over here. Uh, we really appreciate you guys as well. So uh, we will be back tomorrow. Um, Nick Geddes will be back with me tomorrow. So we'll have a producer, and I won't be doing this all by myself. And um, we'll have some fun and frivolity then. So thanks for being with us. We will see you all tomorrow. JP here for my friends at your local Synovus Bank, and I do mean friends, and I do mean local. One of the local managers in Tampa is John 